Hey! No stags. Oh, fucking don't. There's this rule. There's this rule in film and television, which is you never work with animals or children. And this morning was definitely a, uh, a, a proving factor in that. Sorry, my jams are a little loud. Fearless, Watto, and welcome. Hello, hello. How goes it? Get uh, everybody in while I'm still... I realise all the varying sprues are all strewn about the entire flat. Well, the entire room, so... I'm still trying to, to think of a, a good organisational structure as we begin to take on Beefcake Arms! Luke has got the big hands. No, I'm really looking forward to this build. More importantly though, how are you all doing? Uh, flowers, bacon, fearless, hello, hello. Uh, apologies for late start. Um, the dogs just had chaos in their heart today. And Rilu, first! I've actually been trying to find the video that that uh, quote is taken from, and uh, I realized just how deep into the paint of YouTube I used to be. So, Wolfgrad, Watto, and welcome. Jamami, Watto, and hello. Uh, oh, no! Fearless, that is, that is sad times, bad times, my friend. Um, I've had the uh, Pokemon sleep thing going for the last three nights, so uh, I now know through the science of uh, of Pokemon professors that I sleep like shit. It's been uh, it's been good failing at a video game. <laughs> Sorry, Lizzie, did I say hi? Wraith, I hope I did. Well, to both of you, Watto and welcome. How are you all doing, friends? Well, so, Wolfgrad, that's the whole ruddy thing is, it was, it was a parody video from a thousand years ago about, like, all the very first comments on any animation. So you always have first, and then, what program do you use? Eagle Raptor liked this video. And all sorts. Oh, Lost Flowers, that's, that's feckin' bad times, friend. But, I feel you. Uh, in terms of my sleep pattern, I need to do a force reset, but I can't do that for a while, so I've just got to kind of live in this, you know, 4 a.m. bedtime kind of life. Oh, Nyvalen, had a good gun day to you all. Anyway, sorry, aside from me being very uh, overworked, underslept, and stressed, how are you all doing? It is a Gundam day. Uh, we'll be moving over to the build setup in just a second, but check this out. Wow! You can see my tiny world. Got my coffee. Got the Gandams that I just fuck around with when I'm talking to you lot. Yeah, yeah, look at this, this Viking Mother Hubbard. Uh, and Murica Gundam. Well, not THE Muraka Gundam, a Muraka Gundam, like... This is the uh, entry grade from uh, Gundam Build... Uh, it wasn't Divers, it was called something else. Uh, Eric gave me this, it's a really little present. And now, but we all know that uh, the Neo-American Gundam is the true uh, American Gundam. Uh, that is a surfing, football-playing, revolver-shooting boxer of a linebacker. That is the true Murica Gundam. Followed only secondly by um, uh, Tequila Gundam Rebuke, which has a gigantic Gundam-sized acoustic guitar. I'm not making this up. Uh, however, the cowards over at, uh, at Bandai Namco uh, have yet to give us models of either of those. Uh, Ray says, is that the anti-pope situation? Like, different Murica Gundams each claiming the title? Ah, 
No, it's more like a litmus test of how Murica you think a Gundam needs to be to be the Murica Gundam, right? Like, if you think just this little, uh, this little, like, uh, red, white, and blue, uh, classic granddaddy with a couple of stars and stripes on, if you think that's what it takes to be Murican, then, then so be it. But no, uh, Chibidi Crockett, uh, is what I think of. Like, I can't state how Murica- hang on, I might as well just bring this up while we're talking about this. Uh, G Gundam Neo America. Alright, here we go. Gundam Max Maxeter. So, uh, this is the Gundam Maxeter. Look at this, look at this guy. It looks okay, but I just, I, I can't begin to state how much this is. So, it has the linebacker style helm. It has two revolvers on either hip. But the rest of it seems pretty standard, right? Wrong! Um, it's chest armor comes off it has abs the shoulder pads turn into boxing uh, gloves for close combat um let's see if there's any really good pictures of the oh man these are all these are all kind of weak source let's uh let me just grab you some really good pictures of this oh man so yeah there's Oh, also, uh, Chippity Crockett, the pilot of this, has a harem of uh, mech pilot, uh, mech mechanics as well. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. And there's the surfboard for the full, complete package. So when I say Murica, that's what I mean. <laughs> anyway, how are you all doing? Fred, it's lovely to see you. Watto and welcome. Uh, today we are not going to be working on uh, the most Murica of Murica Gundams. Uh, today we're going to be working on beefcake arms here. Like, I cannot state how ridiculous this is going to be. I don't know if this is coming across, but the TLDR is that uh, this is the super giant arms version of the Red Ashtray from Gundam Seed. Uh, Gundam Seed being one of the worst <laughs> the Gundam shows. A lot of people, it was their first, or they grew up with it, and I respect that. Like, if you watched it and you enjoyed it, I ain't dissing. But, if you've never heard me mention Gundam Seed before, there's a very good reason. It's a very good reason. It's not good! Same with, uh, I think it's Recognista. Love the mech designs. Love the mech. I mean, okay, look at this. Look at this gigantic samurai mech, right? There are no weapons on this thing apart from one fuck off katana. Um, <laughs> it's no G Savior. He's <laughs> trying to hurt me. Um, so you'd imagine the pilot of this would be some cool, like Yojimbo type, you know, or kind of like the the cool gun samurai from OG Tri. No, no, he's a monstrous fucking dweeb and a dork. But not even in a dweeb and a dork in like an ironic way or in a way that makes sense. Like, ugh, ugh. it's a disappointing, disappointing dork. <laughs> I mean, Wraith, I still bring that up to people whenever we talk about OG Gundam. I mean, the time Wraith just. Wraith had a mental breakdown over the uh, lack of horse physics. Think about that a lot. <laughs> anyway, so, um, quick show of hands. Uh, who else is working on a crafting product? Who else is, is building stuff today? Because um, I'd like to know. Um, we have two goals today. One, hang out and make cool shit. Two, I want to come up with a theme for the Mech Gala. Now, I've been telling people a lot about this, and it's it's gaining some traction. Uh, the TLDR being, we're going to do basically a giant robot building contest for the winter. And we're going to pick a nice, uh, a nice pre-Christmassy kind of time, and give everybody plenty of time to make something super fancy or what have you. Uh, with the theme being 
what if you took a giant robot to, you know, uh, a fashion gala? But to make it a fashion gala, we need a theme. And the theme needs to be weird and nebulous or like full of room for nonsense interpretation. And I'd like to try and come up with something like that today. If we can't, no worry. Neo should know just making scones count as a crafting project. I'm gonna say yes, because baking is science, cooking is art. Well, significant. Hopefully, I can be the uh, the motivational background noise to help you clean through. I can be like, yeah, put those socks in the wash. Yeah, clean that counter. Um, me, I do what's called what I call the drink and clean, uh, which is where I uh, beast both the uh, the kitchen, the living room, uh, and usually a bottle of wine. Um, last night. I did that thing I do sometimes where I drank uh, glow-in-the-dark wine and messaged a whole bunch of people about cool crossover stuff. Um, I don't want to say the who's that I contacted and whatnot, but I'm fingies crossed. Fingies crossed, because if it all comes to uh, comes together, it'd be feckin' brilliant. Um. Oh, J-Bose is going to do some crafting quests. <laughs> Look, the best thing about these Gundam build days is it's basically like an extended long hangout and chat. So, come one, come all, come hang out. Um, as a quick FYI, if you are in the greater Seattle region, do not go downtown t tonight or tomorrow for love nor money. Uh, the reason being, um, there are at least... I believe it's today for sure. There is a triple threat of uh, apparently one of the biggest sports games, or that might have been last night. Uh, Taylor Swift is in town, as are the Swifties, uh, and it is the Capitol Hill block party. And there's a bunch of other stuff going on. Getting in and out of downtown Seattle, like Seattle, Maine, um, is a fresh nightmarish hell that one should not attempt. So I uh, just wanted to, to point that out. Although I am saying that at like 10 to 4 in the afternoon. So that does mean that most people are probably already in the pit. But, you know, can't, uh, can't say I don't warn people. Vanderbeast, Wato and welcome. Hello, hello. I mean, Lizzie, that would be the, that would be the banger. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope things are going good with yourselves. Uh, I put it in games news, but I really wanted to, to take another moment to mention this. So, we've all had to suffer those awful mobile game ads, right? Where the, you know, it's pull out the pin to get the guy to get the treasure. And oh no, he pulls out the wrong pin, gets covered in lava. Or the, you know... The, the little guy starts at five, and then he has to fight someone who's a thousand. So he has to fight someone who's two to get to seven, and all of that nonsense. Um, I don't know if we've talked about how that whole, like, fake game marketing uh, is surprising, like, is insidious and surprisingly successful. Um, so, <laughs> uh, it was released uh, on the 19th. Uh, but there is a little team who has released a game called, yeah, you want those games, right? Here you go. Now let's see you clear them. And it's just a collection of the fake mobile phone game ads, if they were actually real games. It's like, it's a mini game collection, but... Like, come payday, I'm picking that up. I'm going to play that. Because, I don't know if you've seen it, like... The, the stratagem behind the mobile game ads is to present you with a really easy game that anyone can understand. And then, watch somebody play it wrong. That's the hook, right? It's that your younger sibling playing... Like, playing puzzle games, and is doing the obvious thing wrong. And you just wanna, you just wanna, you wanna take it from them, and you wanna do it. A 
Okay, so Almus, no, no, it's not an out of nowhere team, but their project is an out of nowhere project. Because up until this point, they've only done ports and re releases. Well, actually, so Verdant Flow, the infomercial is a different uh, marketing uh, tactic. Um, the infomercial where people are terrible at things is actually designed to code certain problems for disabilities, but without marketing them as disability products. Uh, I'm not saying that's good or right. Like, we shouldn't be in a point where a product marketed to people that need additional help ends up being a mark against it. But um, at least in North America, if you market a product to a uh, a group of individuals that have a specific disability or challenge, the product doesn't sell. But if you market it in such a way as to be like, oh man, how do I hold all this Tupperware? It sells. I mean, there's two thoughts on that one, which is one, if you have a disability, you don't like being talked down to. Fucking course. I mean, that's common sense. Uh, but the other is the perception around it becomes kind of... Uh, almost whimsical. So yeah. But yeah, with the mobile game strategy, a lot of the mobile games that they advertise are actually long, slow, like, click the button to make number go up. And that doesn't translate into a gameplay experience that people want to give a shit about. Um, I think, what is it, the Zombies one I think is the best example. It's like puzzles and zombies or whatever. Uh, and that game is just a... a countdown time again, you know, send people out to get resources, they'll be back in two days, unless you spend zombie fun bucks or some nonsense, you know, as you build your your little mobile base out, you know, it's slow, it's, engagement is all about make number go up, but make number be longer each time, you know what I mean? But that doesn't translate into a trailer, but watching somebody playing and failing at a match three and failing a tactical choice around a match three, that makes you kind of, one, immediately understand the product and makes you grind your teeth. And that strategy has been very successful. Anyway, yeah. So this team has made all of those games as one collection and I'm just all about it. Viking 64 Fender 1, Viking 64 Fender 2, Viking 64 Fender 3, Viking 64 Fender 4. Four whole years already. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Who's your favorite vampire? Hmm, I think the one from Sesame Street. He doesn't count. I assure you he does. Oh, sorry, uh, where are my manners? So, Ragnar, Gundam Ho! Lovely to see you. Uh, and Martin, yeah, four years in the blink of an eye. Fucking yo. I hope you're all doing good. Um, yeah. Sorry, I, apologies for talking about Mobley game ads and stuff like that. My other favourite is... Um, <laughs> my other favourite at the moment is the Arknights adverts that have these really gorgeous animated pieces from the cartoon, oh, sorry, from the anime. Um, but they put them to the weirdest music tracks that absolutely do not fit the, the title or the product. It's feckin' wild. Oh yeah, well, mine, they are. They're, they're feckin' terrible looking games and you know you're getting hoodwinked. Um, and that's why uh, this team has put together, yeah, you want those games, right? Well, here you go. Now let's see you clear them. God. <laughs> uh, well, Mental Monk, uh, only if it's outside of... 
Only if it's outside of mainland Europe, and then it becomes a Gundike. Yeah. Yeah. I reached for that joke, and it wasn't funny. Now I have to sit with it. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I, I hope you're all doing good. Um... <laughs> uh, the only video games I've been playing, dear friends, have been uh, the Pokemon Sleep uh, and a little bit more of the Hitmans. So, I have no interesting stories to tell you. Uh, you were all there for Sea of Thieves yesterday, which was real good. I'm still very happy that while we didn't get the Chest of Fortune... We denied it to those who would betray us. And I've got to admit, I'll be I'll be dining out on that feeling of watching them try and sailing away with the goodies, only to watch the Kraken appear and wrap around their bow. Ah, ah, so good. A jam also agree. It was interesting that the Monkey Island tale itself essentially gave us hints as to where it's going. I'm really looking forward to more. Although, it wasn't until further into the title I realized that, um, unlike with other tall tales, only the person talking to the characters can hear their dialogue. Um, I couldn't work out why everyone was running away while all the characters were talking to me, and I was getting very frustrated at the start of it, because uh, the rest of my squad was running off and doing stuff, and I'm like, wait, 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 I'm still talking to these guys. But no, it turns out that, uh, um, at least for that one specifically, you can't... Uh, you only hear the main points, like Guybrush and stuff like that. <laughs> well, so Martin, I think it's because the amount of dialogue in that tall tale is very different. And there's loads of people to talk to. And if you, like, if four people went into the, the scum bar, or as Kyle dubbed it, the cum bar, um, and you all started talking to different people, you'd have four bits of dialogue all popping off at once, plus ambient. Yeah, and well, Jam, that's why I'm looking forward to going back, because with everybody running around like lunatics on the island, I didn't get a chance to really, like, like steep in uh, the Monkey Island references. And I didn't get the three legends to start going, Grog, 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 Grog! Now, is that because I don't have access to that yet? Possibly. <laughs> Ray says, I have, excuse me, I think you mean as George Lucas dubs it. Yes, sorry. My, uh, my apologies. My apologies. Uh, in other news, friends, because uh, I see uh, a few of our more uh, chaotic regulars are here, um, a... Uh, a couple weeks back, we were talking about... I'm just... Sorry, I just want need to earmark this very quickly. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, a couple weeks back, the uh, internet documentarians, uh, Noclip, announced that they'd basically been given a huge box of broadcast tapes from across the games industry. Um, this includes a buttload of commercials. This includes... Um, E3 presentations. This includes a lot of like studio tours and featurettes that went out on like places like G4 and stuff like that. And they got given a huge block of all this. Uh, and they've been slowly digitizing all of this stuff, uh, which is heckin' cool. Um, the reason I bring this up is from all the, the stuff that they managed to go through, uh, as of yesterday, uh, they uploaded the E3 2006 Sony press conference. 
Uh, now this one is famous. Uh, it's not as bad as the Konami one that I drunkenly made you all watch the other night. Um, however, it does contain Ridge Racer, the Ridge Racer moment, and the infamous um, video games with uh, historic accuracy. Now fight this giant enemy crab and hit its weak spot for massive damage. Um, Sony got bodied in this press conference and back when E3 very clearly had winners and losers, Sony was not the winner that year. Um, there's also a Tony Hawk 2 underground tour with a not cracked out Bamagera, which is a haunting 2004 reminder. Um, they've got like a, a tour of Infinity Ward from, uh, from the pre-release of Modern Warfare. Uh, they got the 2009 uh, Microsoft up, which is a all right one. Um, that was the one where they announced uh, Beatles Rock Band. You know, it's not historical. It's not one you need to watch or can cringe at. Um, but they've also got some stuff around, like uh, there's a Hideo Kojima interview from a thousand years ago, uh, and a panel with Peter Jackson, Peter Molyneux. And some other guy uh, from 2006 on the future of storytelling. And Navalas, we are to welcome. Anyway, um, here's the Noclip archive. Um, I can't promise you that I'll be able to schedule when we do these chaotic, weird, late night nonsense. Uh, all I can say is, like, keep an eye on the Discord. If you see a bunch of us in there, um, feckin' yo, I guess. I, I don't want to start spamming everybody with at everyone's whenever we have these weird little late night stuff. But I also don't want you all to miss out. Or I'll just throw fucking caution to the wind and we can do just a drunken late night stream of it. And I'll just broadcast it here. Who knows? I'm still trying to work out how to best be at the moment. Uh, as I'm sure you've all noticed, the animal care has been a lot. And some days it's super smooth and easy like yesterday. And on days to day, it was just like... That's the reason why we've only just gotten started. So it was like, I'm trying to clean up the space so we can have the double camera set up for building this Gundam. And Amos is being Chaos Incarnate. Um... River has decided that uh, every person going even vaguely near the house uh, must be announced like some kind of royal ball. It's been a lot. Uh, except the guinea pigs have been perfect with no flaws. Uh, they're currently sleeping off like a little kale feast they had earlier. So, I guess what I'm saying is like, thank you all for bearing with me right now. Like, June, July is the quiet period of the year for streaming because everybody's out doing stuff and things like that, and I understand. And for those of you that are here and hanging out, like, I really appreciate it. And, you know, it's always difficult knowing what the, the correct thing to do is professionally and not being able to do it, because... <laughs> oh no, numbers, you are correct. Uh, sorry, my mistake. River is perfect and has no flaws. My apologies. Um, oh, and just jumping back, jumping back, because Lizzie brought it up, and I want to show you all again, because it's my show, and I'm allowed. Uh, so firstly, let me give you the link in case you want to watch this yourself. Um, so let's pause the tune for a second. Uh, so this was from yesterday, and... A little bit of context. So I decided, because uh, the puppies were being wonderful yesterday, so I decided to go into the world and actually be a human. I went to a coffee shop. I got cold brew. You know, like people do. Then they go outside their houses and, like, converse. Um, one of the baristas in my local was on lunch break, and we were just talking about, you know, puppies. You know, because Fiona, as you saw, cut their hand. This particular individual had broken their wrist and they were trying to deal with a with a new new puppy with a broken arm and i was like oh buddy and i was trying to explain sea of thieves to somebody that doesn't play a lot of it you know in the sense of like 
you know, when we do Sea of Thieves night, you know, I'm the captain, we've got M's on the helm, uh, Kyle keeps us afloat and causes chaos, and uh, as I said, like, Fiona can shoot the gnats off a fly, uh, the wings off a fly even, I almost said something very horrendous, uh, with a cannon after they went down like a, a hyper-focus hole and came back a sniper. And then, sure enough, later in the feckin' day, Fiona busts out this shot. She didn't bring this down, because uh, past me is very loud. Oh, and an exploding barrel. Wait for it. Yeah. Oh! oh! What a shot. Fuck yeah, dude. That's why Fiona's on the guns. <laughs> yeah. Woo! From downtown. <laughs> no, Martin, I, I didn't go that far. I just, I went out into the world. I bought a couple of groceries. That's where I got the glow-in-the-dark wine. Um, Payday today. Uh, and the thank you present for being lovely less than three or so. Good shot, funny. Hey, Jam, sincerely thank you, all right? That's... You know, 20 bucks is a lot of money to us, so thank you, all right? Thank you. I really appreciate it. Anyway, anyway, I'm not bringing that up. I'm not fishing or anything. I'm just... Thank you. Uh, it was just that weird thing of, like, you know, talking to somebody in the reel about Sea of Thieves and then splash cut to Fiona just shredding. Like, managing to hit that cannonball square on the nose. Uh, that uh, explosive keg square on the nose, setting off this chain reaction. Fucking brilliant. Going out and stuff? Why would I do that? It's too bleeding hot outside, and these hard drives aren't going to swap themselves. Fair, fair. Uh, that's why I got cold brew. Uh, also, I was trying to uh, work up the courage to message a person who I would like to join us on the Sea of Thieves. Uh, who I've met, but I don't know well. Uh, and they work professionally as an actor, so they're currently on strike at the moment. So I was like, I can't invite them on to the longship for an interview because they can't talk about work, right? So I was like, what can I do? What can I do? Oh, shit. Why don't I invite them to join us for, for Sea of Thieves one evening? Like, that would be feckin' rad. But... I wanted to make sure I didn't send that as a drunken suggestion, <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, Cowley, obviously I can't give it away, but if it was going to be Morgan Freeman... I cannot imagine him putting up with my bullshit. Like, I want to joke about, like, <laughs> the Kraken hazards. No, I can't even do the voice. But, nah. He'd be like, I'm not putting up with this hyperactive ginger bullshit. Fuck you. Um, fuck you, we bounce. Oh, okay, so Wraith, there's, there's two kinds of, like... Uh, if you'll forgive the term outreach that I do for the long ship. And it's usually like people that I think would be interesting to introduce you all to. Um, and they're either people that I know like personally or professionally, right? So for example, the guy I messaged uh, during my uh, my actual going out into the world coffee break, like I've met him, we exchanged a few words at PAX one time and we have all the same industry friends, right? Like, but we never actually met each other, like, in the real. But we're, like, one degree of separation. So it's that thing of, like, I want to be a knobend? Uh, whereas with other people, when I get all fucking, you know, jumped up on red wine at two o'clock in the morning, those are the peeps that I know, but I'm worried about socially imposing, you know? Twitch is such a strange, weird place that... It's like, it's not that I want to hang out with these people because they are internet famous, but I can't help but know in my head that they're internet famous and therefore they're helping me out by hanging out, you know what I mean? 
<laughs> Sorry, yeah, Wraith, you're, you're right, you're right. I just, I worry about this, you know? So many people on Twitch and YouTube and things like that are genuine friends, but they're also massive. And so it's striking that balance of, like, wanting to hang out with them and wanting to win at Twitch, <laughs> you know? <sighs> it's hard, it's hard. Um, also, like, this right here, this is my social life now, all right? Like, yes, I did go out and get coffee and go into the world. Uh, and earlier in the week, I actually got to hang out with a friend. Like, Fiona looked after the dogs when I went out. But I only went down the road. Like, I didn't go off on a fucking adventure. Um, like, I keep trying to tell people, it's like, if you want to hang out and chat, come come chat to me on stream. <laughs> like, this, this is my life. You know? So... Uh, Angel Kalina, what on welcome, friend. Hello, hello. Yeah, Wraith, that's my other worry as well. Because there are so many people in the streaming and YouTube space that it's just... They don't see other people as people. All they see is collaboration and grabbing onto other people larger than them and pulling themselves up. Uh, well, Angel Kalina, sorry it's been a hard day, but... You don't have to worry anymore, because with these beefcake arms, I'll be able to carry us all. We're going to be working on a Gandam, and talking about whatever. Like, no, seriously, it's up to us. Like, uh, aside from coming up with, um, like, fashion gala theme ideas, like, the goal today is we can all work on our varying crafting projects together, have a natter, and talk. Beefy, beefy Gundam. <laughs> it's weird. For a Gundam that doesn't seem to have any cannons, it has all guns. And it can it can tell you which way it is to the beach. Also, the other reason why I'm so excited about this kit is I don't have to build the knees. And yeah, I'm with Wraith on this one, Angel Kalina. Hopefully we can make your day a whole bunch better. Um, and just, friends, thank you for letting me natter about this whole thing, because it does weigh on my mind a lot, because, yeah, I don't know, I've never had that LA mentality, and, yeah, it's so weird that that squad of people that just get into the space of only looking at others as the, the methodology by which they can, you know, where they can blow up. It's like, nah, I just want to hang out with cool friendos. Like, reaching out into the recesses of the internet to find more people like us is a goal, but it's not, like, the goal isn't to, like, usurp Markiplier, you know what I mean? Ooh. I feel us. That could be fucking cool. That, that's entirely valid. <laughs> no, this is like, why not? God. <laughs> Wait, that isn't everyone's goal? Oh, you're fucking terrors. I... Okay. My goals are always, like... Find more people, look after our little our little tribe, our little corner, and try and maintain as much of the stability of the longship as possible. Like, the goal here isn't to have a million followers. The goal here is to have the kind of community that I've always wanted, you know? To have the, the kind of second screen I always wish I could have on Twitch when I'm having to work on stuff, you know? And finding people that would want to spend time in our little corner and kind of, you know, digitally live here, that's that's a much slower process than becoming uh, internet famous, you know? We're not about one thing. We don't start fights for no reason. We don't get embroiled in drama. Uh, a lot of the time, the people that I invite onto the stream are... Hang on, let's get another... 
the soundtrack going. Uh, a lot of the people we invite onto stream are actually people from the games industry space, not from other creative, like, Twitch streams and YouTube and stuff like that. Um, like, we do a lot of things weird and wrong. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just want to keep doing this for as long as we can keep the longship going, you know? That's my goal. I don't know what the fuck I'd do if we suddenly... If we suddenly blew up in a good way, I have no idea what we'd do. We'd probably have to make, like, a an OG longship, like, hidden clubhouse. You know? <sighs> Amos, don't... Hang on a second, friends. Hold that thought. What's up? What's up? Sorry about that, friends. <laughs> well. Uh, so, Joe Matt, back. Uh, Lizzie was saying that, like, Markiplier is weirdly odd about his fame. I Yo! Found a frog in my garden and spent the day looking up where it might be from. Turns out it's European. Some German, some Czech, and a tadpole. Yeah, that's it. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Fuck. Eriman, thank you kindly for the feckin' 2,000 bits. You all been feckin' lovely today. Uh, but fuck you for that joke. <laughs> that was that was a crime that you just did. That was a crime. And Wolfgrad, thank you for filling the pie gloves. Oh, you know what? No, it is a good joke. It is a good joke. Um, but again, Eriman um, and Jam, like, thank you for the beats, friends. Um, oh, yeah. So, well, Lizzie was saying, like, Markiplier being hot about their fame. Absolutely. Uh, I never got to hang out with him back in the day, but I knew a lot of people that did before he really exploded. And another person that absolutely did not expect it. Oh, hey Jam, then I'm doing my feckin' job right. Anyway, uh, enough nattering on about the uh, the nonsense of Twitch.Television. Today, friends, today is about us. Let's build some stuff. Let's be cool kids. Uh, let me just change it to maker and crafting. And you'll get to look at my pasty white arms all day, so enjoy that. Uh, oh, actually, very quickly. Before we get started, first things first, uh, I need to uh, I need to do a little social media. 
Um, oh shit! Well, Kaimal, it's lovely to see you, friend. Um, and I'm the one who should apologise because um, I had intended to start so much earlier and I didn't get the chance. Um, I'm real sorry, friend. I'm real sorry. But yeah, I hope your climbing tomorrow is feckin' great. Oh. Alright, everybody. Um, pose like you mean it. Alright. This uh, this photo is going out to the internet, so uh, you're gonna you're gonna pretend like you're uh, you're excited to be here. Look at these beefy arms. Okay, okay. Some of you weren't smiling. All right, let's let's do that again. All right. <laughs> I laugh at my own jokes. All right. Better, better. Ah, oh, well, uh, Martin, I took a bunch, so hopefully one of them... Uh, you've got your eyes open. Alright. <laughs> Listen! The Amazonian slip there. And Wraith, if you weren't flipping the bird, I would have been disappointed. Um, I'm trying to get better about telling the varying internets that we're live. What's the old saying? Uh, on Zoom, nobody knows if you're wearing pants. Alright, now let's tell the rest of the internet. Um, so yeah, sorry, just as a double double check, so uh, Kimball's doing a spot of drawing. Uh, how many of you are doing like a little uh, build or craft along? Hopefully it does, Miyaki Sakura. Hopefully it provides a little bit of uh, background calming effect. Okay. Oh, and Jam's planning a uh, uh, a TTRPG session. Lovely. All right. Let's get started. Check this out. Now, hopefully, you can still see my face. Move my coffee out of the way. And yes, I do have my death before decaf cup. All right, you go here. Oh, forgot to. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen these already before, but uh, Deus made these. Uh, they are loyalty uh, stamp cards for the Sea of the Damned in <laughs> Sea of Thieves. I have spares in case I actually want to punch them. And uh, these were leftover drink tickets from Pocket Gamer Connects. Ah! Put those in my little party pile. Alright. And if you hadn't seen it, uh, yes, this is the Viking Gundam action figure that uh, you'll drunkenly encouraged me to pick up. <laughs> Alright. 
And Murica Gundam back on the shelf with you. Go be go be Murican over there. Oh, and uh, this is the uh, tiny t tiny char Asnable uh, left over from the uh, the last cool build I did. Oh, ah. woo woo woo! No, it hasn't got enough heft to it. Right. Ah. Uh, so Kaimbo says they picked out their Gundam. Ooh. I mean, Kaimbo, you can tell me, like with previous things, I'm going to be entering this contest, and I will not be telling the judges what I'm doing. So I'm in with you lot. Uh, so Wraith, that's a Wraith. Uh, Kaimbo, do you know what Gundam it is you picked out? Sorry, I said they had chicks. Sh hedgehogs sheltering from the rain. That's feckin' cute. That's feckin' cute, Asari. Ooh, Kimble, good choice. Sandrock's a feckin' great design. It's got those lovely big detailed shoulders as well. Sandrock's definitely one of those mechs that, like, like the the OG Sandrock. I just, I love the design. Really thought I thought the colors were very dull for what it is. Uh, I don't know. Some people like uh, the the Sandrock custom and stuff's pretty interesting. But yeah, that's a that's a Gundam that you can make look super feckin' fancy. Uh, let's get started. So, with this particular Gandam that I'm building today, this is a special build. And the reason it's special is because of this right here. Check it out. It comes with an action figure internal frame. So, the rest of it is a traditional kit. Like, you know, I've got a buttload of sprues all over the place we put together. But the actual core of it is this. Which means I don't have to build the fucking knees. The thing I hate the most about building Gandams, and I don't have to do it. Like, that just feels jammy. Uh, also, shout out to both uh, New Type and Punk with a Camera. Uh, neither of them are sponsoring me, uh, but both have had my patronage in the past and may again. Uh, New Type is a Gundam model supplier in the US. Uh, and they do a lot of like social justice charity work and things like that, so I support the fuck out of them. Uh, even though they don't return my calls! Said Will, saltily. Um, and Punk with the Camera are the peeps who made this shirt. The uh, Denny's is just Waffle House for people that can't fight. Uh, they also made the, the Trees Can't Be Harmed if the Lorex is armed. And the t-shirt that I chickened out of for wearing at um, GDC, which was... Uh, Avril Lavigne invented punk. Everything before it is classic rock. Because I was a little worried that someone might think I was serious. <laughs> Alright, we don't have a trash box yet, but don't worry about that. <laughs> Fred, why are you like this? Um, also, at some point, I need to work out a new format for how we do uh, interviews on the longship. Uh, so if you see a late night stream that pops up friends that's like the Will phone-in show, uh, that's probably going to be me testing that out. Uh, Fred, do you have a webcam? Because I know you now have headphones, so you can do um, like on-stream stuff. <laughs> no, 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 Wraith, uh, new type is not placeholder. Placeholder actually responds to my messages. They just ghost me every time we got fucking something going on. 
I don't know how to quit them. I don't know how to quit them. Alright. This piece feels important. Alright. Okay, let's have a look. Have a look in a book. Okay, so uh, I'm very much digging uh, whoever it was that chose to use the Final Fantasy font here. I'm, I'm about this. Okay, so Fred, you do have a webcam. Lovely, lovely. Because uh, if you haven't been hanging out in uh, Discord too, too much uh, of late, which is understandable because none of you should emulate mine and Fred's sleep pattern, uh, we've basically done like a lot of like late night banter on a myriad of subjects. Uh, while it's mostly been uh, Aiden asking for advice, like um, I don't know, I kind of want to, I kind of want to do more weird late night banter. I don't know. Maybe it's just because we played that uh, play, um, the game we played recently just got me into that mindset. Sometimes, Wraith, sometimes. But as much as we uh, as much as we rip the piss, we are rooting for, for Aiden's success. You know. I think for a lot of us, um, mask presenting lot, you know, we see the <laughs> Oh well, Kaolu, that's <laughs> I can't step to that. Uh, but no, I think those of us who are mask presenting, who have or uh, currently work in video games, you know, when you meet a lot of these kind of like these up-and-comers and these green beans, you just kind of want them to not make the same mistakes that you make. So. <laughs> hey, significant, you got this, all right? Alright, let's start laying everything out. So we need G11 to start. Hello! Alright. Oh, actually, so for some of you who are new here, like Kaolu, uh, I'm I'm gonna flex a little bit. Hang on, I'm gonna move everything around just a sec. I'm gonna flex a little bit because ages, ages back, um, before I had this kind of dedicated space, um, building Gandams was a challenge because I got a lot of stuff and you need a lot of tools for putting together your Gandam nonsense. But what do you do when you got lots of stuff in a space? Well, you make yourself a little movable fortress. Oh yeah, I gotta repair that. This poor uh, SD Gundam Barbatus. Um, it was a Christmas decoration modified Gundam, and this poor thing has taken more tumbles than any other mech in the house. Thankfully, it's sturdy. All right, we'll pay you later. Um, but yeah, so the thing I'm going to flex on is that I basically have like a little mobile toolkit for all of my Gandam stuff. Uh, so I got this on sale, I think during a, like a Prime Day sale like a thousand years ago. Uh, and check it out. So I've got all of my uh, tools, kit, inks, uh, ink remover, spare Q-tips the whole shebang, everything I need for putting my Gandams together in my little mobile case. Yeah, um, and like I wouldn't have splashed the cash, but it was on sale and it's been a feckin' lifesaver. Okay, we're actually on the subject of that. Let's put this out of the way over here. There we go. Oh, Wraith, uh, Tiny Big Zam was hiding. Tiny Big Zam! Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Just trying to fish it out without having to stand up. I never 
never thought I'd see a Gundam cascade, let alone create one. Johnny Big Sam. <laughs> Johnny Big Sam. I went through a little uh, phase of making tiny videos around Tiny Big Sam. Um, and my goal was to carry this around and make more videos, but uh, uh, you'll notice Tiny Big Sam is not an easy model to carry in your pocket. And after I stabbed myself in the hand a couple times, I was like, you know what? Tiny Big Sam, this isn't, this, this relationship isn't working. And Dustin, Watto and welcome. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I haven't redone my nails since the last time I got drunk and did them, so my nails are a mess right now. Okay. Okay, right. G11. Right, let's get everything laid out. Not like you need me to tell you this. It's just having a system for where all your sprues are is an absolute godsend. All right. So we've got A over here. Okay, so A, B. A. This is going to take a while. So we're off to Beckham G. E's over here. A few of these I'm going to have to go over with some Gundam cleaning stuff. That's N. My word. Sorry, friends. This part of the operation does not make for great conversation, you know what I mean? Okay. My word. Greybeard, what on welcome? Oh god, it's significant. Yeah, that sounds like a heavy day. That sounds like a heavy day. Was uh, was that a recent one? Actually, we'll put the we'll put blade and gold theme stuff down there. And we got my, so A and B, then my two C's. I can find bloody G. Ooh. I mean, significant, I think we've all been there. I've simultaneously been the... Uh, The bastard and the the done by in the past, so very understand that. Okay, all right, so we've got some F's here. I can M. Okay. Ah, G. Thousand years of hunting. Oh, sorry, let me move my phone out of the way. Anyway, uh, so significant. What were some of the, the figures in question? Oh, and Kaolu, hey, go get some sleep. 
Um, if I see you for random streams throughout the weekend, then feckin' brilliant. But if not, have an excellent weekend. Okay, okay. So while we're getting into this part of the nonsense, while we get into this part of the nonsense, let's talk about the Mech Gala. Because I know um, uh, Relu and uh, Kimball and peeps like that will have to have a little snooze in a bit and start making a move. So let's have a chat about this, right? So it's... Is there anyone here who is not familiar with the Met Gala? Oh, well, significant. Um, thank you for saying. Um, oh, no! <laughs> Sorry, uh, Angel Clean was like... Uh, the cat's barfed inside the door. Ah, oh, it's little bastards. Protest pukes. Yeah, that's not visible, so I don't have to worry too, too much about it. Alright, so let's get my, uh, my Gandam pen. Well, so, okay, so numbers. The event we're going to be doing is called the Mech Gala. But I w was trying to use the Mech Gala as, like, a, as a space of inspiration. Because I want to do something that has a nice open-ended theme, you know? Because ultimately, you can do anything for this build contest, right? The goal is, like, fancy red carpet, but make it Gundam, right? Oh, yeah, if you haven't seen these before... These are GM300. They basically contain an uh, ink remover. And you just brush it once over areas where your inking has gotten out of hand. And then just clean it up with a Q-tip. Uh, and then you end up with super... Hang on, that's pretty sharp. Well, beans. Uh, you end up with super, super clean line work. So I've been slowly working on doing the... Uh, the inking of this throughout the week and that way I can clean it as we're putting it together a couple of little bits that I missed but well we can come back to them and fill them in uh, so Kimball says there's some really interesting inspirations from the dresses at the Met Gala okay Put up. Build this beefy back. Yeah, beefy back. Uh, Dustin says, Mech Gala, wherever I may chrome. Uh, Annoyingly, my brain immediately went to Chrome on the range, but uh, I don't think we need to go with a cowpoke theme for this one. At least not until uh, Premium Bandai stops being such fucking cowards and gives us Tequila Gundam like we want. Um... Uh, Mech Gala dressed to kill. Hmm? Not a bad shout. Um, uh, sorry, and Wraith was just saying, like, for those who haven't encountered it, like, the Mech Gala's hook is that each year there is a theme that you're supposed to dress up for. And people take it to, like, hella fashion levels. Not always good. I mean, unfortunately, we have to deal with Jared Leto every year being a knob end. Uh, this year, he just showed up on a fursuit. So at first, everyone was like, yo, some cool kid wore a whole fursuit to the Met Gala. Because I think the theme was like cats this year or something like that. And then they were like, oh, no, Jared Leto wore a fursuit. Oh, sorry, what do I need? Uh, uh, 20, 21, 22, 23. All right, these ones across here. Okay. 
Um, but yeah, some years, like, the designs that you see are brilliant. And it's a great reminder that the only thing that stops us dressing like Final Fantasy villains is money. There is. That is the only thing that stands between you and looking like what's-his-face that summons anima. You know what I mean? Well, okay, his is also about an industrial quantity of hair products, but that's another story. <laughs> Seymour, thank you, numbers. No, uh, Alice was like, Mech Gala, open fire on Jared Leto. I'm not hearing a no. No, I'd probably get done for being a, a hate group. I, I was once um, part of an anti-Bono Facebook group, and we got shut down for being a hate group. Yeah. That's probably the only skeleton in my closet in terms of, like, internet communities. And the group was called I Hate Bono and I Hate His Fucking Face. Jared, never let o me go. Ugh. Ooh. I remember, God, I was talking to... I think it was Ben? But I was talking to somebody about this, about how one of his best roles is still the evil corporate villain from the newer Blade Runner film, because it's just him. It stays with me. <laughs> uh, Ragnar, my friend once said that the reason that Sin keeps attacking the world of Final Fantasy X is because of the amount of hair product they put into the atmosphere. And uh, that will make me laugh for a thousand years. <laughs> uh, Fred, it's like Beetlejuice, but with capitalism. Oh, they like Italian. Um, but okay, so jumping back, jumping back. Like, what can we go for thematically? Like, we could go for... You know, we could keep it nice and light and airy-fairy. Like, um, you know, the winter... The winter of our discount mechs. Uh, I mean, the theme of the... The theme of the contest at the moment already is, like giant robots but make it fancy like mechs of the red carpet I do like um, I do like that as a concept you know the mechs of the red carpet I mean Fey Gundams but again, I just want to try and keep it so that we're not... We're focusing on something nice and broad. Because I feel like when you're doing creative contests, you either need to, like, like open the pit up, get weird and wild with it with something that was really... Something that's really open to interpretation or something specific. So sorry, like, mechs of history in the world would be a really good build contest, but I think that would need to be its own thing. Because definitely when we did the Games Company one, the uh, the Total War mech I thought was very inspired. Uh, and that was a Gundam build. Uh, sorry, that was a Lego build. That's when we were heaven sent But remember and I think Lego would be valid for this coming build contest, but I think it would put you at a disadvantage. Because, like, painting and decorating Lego is more difficult. You kind of end up with that, um, like, unprimed 3D printing problem. Kyneball says, care to describe uh, super fancy? How fancy? Uh, Ragnar was saying Venusian Mask Ball. Ah, I think that theme's too specific. Because the Venusian Mask Ball style is very, very clearly defined. 
uh, I knew someone in the games industry who was like super fucking into that stuff. Uh, and uh, I once got trapped in conversation with him about it. Um, like I'm, all, I'm always down for hearing about people's uh, fascinations and fixations, but there's only so many times you can be told that most of the masks in Venice aren't actually uh, proper Venetian masks, and you have to go to specific places, and I'm like, I know, and now I don't care. For the record, though, I would absolutely go to a, you know, a uh, Venetian ball, given the chance. <laughs> I'm kind of saying the mech ball. <sighs> but then, like, we've already got the mech gala as part of the pun, you know what I mean? Like, if this goes real well, what we could do in the future kind ball is, like, mech prom. I know it's a bit memnol referential, but... I think it could be a lot of fun. Just this pun is so good to use. <laughs> I mean, you can see what I mean. Uh, Vern Flo says Mech Homecoming has a better mouthfeel than Mech Prom. I know what you mean. But the Mech Gala has the best, because it is a wonderful, terrible pun that will do somebody a damage. So it's a twofer, really. See? Guinea pigs agree. Oh, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, sorry, friends. Uh, so basically... Um, Certain nub marks will be seen, and those ones you want to sand down and you want to clean them up so that they don't show up. Uh, some nub marks won't be seen, so all you really got to do is just kind of whittle them down. Like, to quote Faulty Towers, what the eye don't see, the chef gets away with. Okay. Okay. Building his little waist here. So Angel Cleaner says, when I think of fancy, I think of dresses with long trains and heavy fabric. I mean, that's valid. Like, how would you... Uh, not you specifically, Angel Cleaner, I guess all of you, but how would you put together, like, a train... As in, like, the long-flowing um, end-of-a-dress-type train for a giant robot. Because there's a specific mech design in Armored Core for Answer that has a battle skirt, and quite a few Gandams have that same setup. Um, where's... Oh, where is he at? Okay, so there's two I can show you that are really good examples of that. Uh, actually, and they're both ones that I painted, so here we go. So we've got our good friend here, who is super fancy. Oh, why do you feel like your pieces are all about to... Okay, so first up, we've got our uh, fanciful barbatus here. So we've got the armor plating around the, uh, the leg region. The mechanical design around that is it's meant to protect the joints, but it just gives it a nice kind of flow. And then this one has the, the jet units on the side, giving it these really cool kind of swooping hips. Uh, and I just, oh, I fucking love this. I'm really proud of this one. There's a lot I would have done different, but I'm so happy with how it turned out. Um, but then we've got the O, God, I need to dust around here, that has more of like this chunky skirt. And then, what is basically just a fucking bushel in the back, which again is designed to be like heavy armor, and with this Mother Hubbard, uh, the skirt is also a trick weapon. So, I don't know if I can show you. I don't know. Can you, will you unfold as you're supposed to? Yeah, there we go. So, the big O's hook in this one is that the skirt contains two additional arms that have two additional beam sabers in them. And so it's meant to kind of like catch uh, opponents unaware and things like that. Oh.
Oh good. This this fell off, and I don't know from where. It's gonna be one of those days, isn't it? Uh, oh okay, back ankle. All right. So you want it to? Whoop! <laughs> hey, lagmeister. Watch out and welcome. Um. Yeah, so uh, there's a particular mech design in Armored Core for Answer that has a huge kind of like bushel of a train that's used essentially like an armored, as like an armored hovercraft. So you could take that in a lot of different directions. For the mech gala, I mean, what you could do is like plate mail or scale mail as a cape into a sweeping train. Because skirts can be tricky because the size of the models, the skirts can't quite have the same heft that they would. But, like, starting at the, the shoulders and making it more of a cape, I mean, that's, that's viable. Uh, so Wraith is saying, okay, what about Metal Gear theme? What you're starting Gundams after member of Foxhounds. I mean, again, that's a good overall setup. Um, not too dissimilar from the uh, the E3 contest that we did, right? But, but again, getting people to pick themes, doing the, the drafting of it, uh, that wouldn't be something I'd want to do for this mech gala. Oh, sorry, I need A34 and B7. Where you at, 34? Mech Gala, the ball to end all balls. Not bad, not bad. A lot of balls, though. A lot of balls. Uh, we're seven. Boosh. Man, I love it when past me has done the uh, the line work super clean and I don't have to handle anything. It's like a little, it's like a little gift from the, uh, the past, you know? Uh, Angel Clean says you could do scale plates that react to each other. Yeah, I mean, you're setting yourself up for a lot of work. Mech Gala, drop it like it's 0079. Australian parking welcome. Well, so Lagmeister, I mean, this is where this conversation is kind of fascinating, is that yes, you could do that as like a uh, a high-speed mine detonation setup, but if we're looking at like actually building something like this for a contest, you know, doing tiny chainmail, it's not impossible. But oh boy, you are making yourself a lot of work there. I mean, hell, I'm not going to stop you. Drop it like it's bot. Oh my word, Van der Beast. I mean, I love it, but oh my word. <laughs> the, like the dress? It has war in the pockets. Fuck, that's good. That's a good entry name as well. Mech Gala, Expedition Unknown. Okay, I think we're getting closer there. Expedition Unknown. I mean, maybe I'm over-engineering this whole theme and stuff like that. Like, again, we won't be... Like, this event won't be till after the summer. But if my last two Gundam builds have shown me anything, it's that I personally need a long old run-up. Mech Gala, light speed. Okay. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. The, the poetic and the interpretive, I think, is where we want to be living right now.
Okay, so this locks into here, like so. <laughs> it's so tiny. And then this locks into the cr well, not quite the crotchal region. It's like a mechanical belly button of sorts. There we go. There we go. See? Simples. <laughs> uh, Wraith, No Great November is progressing, slowly but surely. This is going to be a big one off the table. Alright, now it gets complicated. Okay. This is an A and G combo. When I do use that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Hunter said, for reasons definite rates to this, where might one pick up an RB79 kit? Let's have a look. I mean, like I said, friends, we're just here to natter and hang out today. Oh, you mean the ball. Ha! <laughs> um... I mean, shit, it depends on the size. Um, you could buy two of the 144 scale together. You could get two balls on fucking Amazon right this very second. Let's see what new types got. Uh, currently, the um, premium Bandai has the walking uh, has the walking ball lol, uh, available. Uh. Sadly, uh, new types out of all of them, uh, including the Verkai and the uh, the Fight Ball. Hey, Jam, uh, lurk away. Thank you kindly, um, and to be continued. Uh, so Ray suggesting Mech Gala, War Crimes of Fashion. Ragnar, Mech Gala, new type of dance. Okay. Passing the Mech Dell test. Grown. <laughs> Mech Gala, oops, all bionicles. Uh, what I will say is that I am not going to be the judge. Um, and the judges will be rating things based on, I, I guess, like, your mech, your build, and your fashion. So, absolutely do not look to, to me for uh, suggestions and advice on how you should be doing that. Because I am not a, uh, a gentleman of fashion sense. I have been stylish in the past, but I have never been a gentleman of fashion. Alright. So I need 33 and 38. There's 38. Hello there. General Kenobi. You are not going to be seen, so I don't have to worry about your nubs. <laughs> and 33. 33? Yeah. You might be seen, so let me be a little more. Ah! We're okay. We're okay. So Kaimel's saying crimes of fashion, the mech gala, the theme is crimes of fashion. That could work. Because, like, then we can have a lot of fun. Uh, now, Wraith was going, like, a, a similar direction, which is the theme could be works of art. So you could create something that is artistic. You could create something that's inspired by art. You know, be it classic, fine, or modern. That could work. I mean, friends, I'm going to be here all feckin' day, probably well into the evening. So, like, we've got plenty of time to brainstorm, but also we can vote on which one we like. Because currently War Crimes of Fashion uh, and... Um... Uh, works of Art are definitely there. You clip onto there like that. 
that. All right, and you're going to be covered by a faceplate, so I don't have to worry too, too much. Lovely. Uh, where my G's at? I need two G7s. Actually, let me clean up the G7s now while they're on the sprue. Uh, and again, friends, if you can't see the, the things and stuff that I am doing, please let me know, because I can bring the... I can bring the camera down closer, or wiggle it about, or what have you. Uh, I'm just trying not to flash in my crotch all of the time. Yeah, and Wraith, you hit the nail on the feckin' head there. Like, we're trying to zero in on a theme that doesn't constrain people or cause them to have to spend stupid amounts of money, but allows people to be expressive. Hey, up, Chuck! Oh, I thought I'd lost that one. <laughs> Lagmeister says, does making a Gundam with a Hello Kitty head count as pulling a Jared Leto? That would be funny as fuck. I mean, I don't know how well our judges will know Met Gala Meta, but if they do, that would be very funny. Ugh. Sorry, I misclipped this. And these little uh, undergate nubbins, I missed them. Ah, so fiddly. So fiddly! Ah. Do this for fun when you believe. Okay, there we go. It's so tiny. It's so tiny and small. It's hard to the, the light just right where it's not looking like I'm interrogating you, but you can still see all of the things I'm working on. It's very difficult. There we go. Might be a little better. Ah, significant. Well done! Achievement unlocked. Mech Gala, sprocket full of sunshine. It's not bad. But why does that sound like a Professor Elemental song? Just is that just me? No one else, no one else getting the the prof vibes from that one. I will admit at the moment, like I'm kind of leaning towards war crimes of fashion, so. If people want to go hard on, like, fashion meta, they can. If people want to make things that just look fun and gaudy, they can. Like, there's very little people being told what they can and can't do with that, which I like. Uh, but... I have 32. That's young. But I'd love to hear your thoughts and feels, friends. I know I can get very overexcited when we talk about these things. Oh yeah, and um, Kaimbo, I don't know if you're still chilling and illing, but um, uh, did you mention which uh, mech kit it was that you wanted to, to work? Oh, you know, it was the sand rock. God. Coffee, why aren't you doing your job? Uh, Dustin, I'm going to veto dress to a press, just because that's, uh, that's a little too into fascist fashion, you know what I mean? Uh, 
I, I worry about opening up the doors that way, you know what I mean? He's undergated. Lovely. Uh, I don't know if undergated is the correct term, but undergating is when um, you have fancy plastics and the way in which uh, the pieces are attached to the sprue, when you cut them off, the nub marks are invisible because they're kind of like hidden at an L angle. So when you trim everything together, the fancy plastic uh, doesn't lose any of its uh, its shine. It's uh, definitely a sought after thing when it comes to like the shiny Gandam kits. Ah. Stab myself in the hand there. forward to building the um, uh, the Gundam Phoenix, the one that's all shiny gold. That's probably going to drive me uh, do lally tap, but we'll make it work. All right. So this is shiny. This locks into here, like so. Look at that. Oh, love to see it. Love to see it. All right. Off comes the head. Off with his head! Ah, there we go. You can wait there. <sighs> and Wraith, I do see what you're saying about like war crimes of fashion as a theme. I'm and I'm with Jam on this one. I think at least our squad would see it as an opportunity to do like gaudy fashion nonsense rather than but I know what you're saying I know what you're saying and your concerns are valid see these are my validation hands <laughs> what the fuck am I saying rainbow boat mech I mean J-Bow's as someone who's tried to make the, the rainbow mech who started that project a few times if you can, I got masses of respect, but I've not worked out a way to do the rainbow mech without like killing myself in terms of work. Um, although I did see one build that used the um, Moon Gundam, like goddammit Moon Moon, the Gandam. Um, and what they did is they took the shield part of the shield pieces apart and had each of those like as a rainbow and i think you could kind of do the same with like the uh the the high new new high uh gandam as well you're just being a fiddly little piece of shit. take back everything nice i said about undergating why you like this Which will cave first? The peace or the man? significant i've i've often said that like i'm not a good friend to have if your goal is to to do less to make less uh, or to be less hungry although in my defense relu is the absolute worst for making people hungry and i suffer from it too it just I'm, i basically end up working as relu's promotional team Just have to bite the bullet on this bit. Okay. 
Yeah, I might just have to bite the bullet on this one. I don't think I'm going to get... I don't think I'm going to get it where I want it to be with the resources I have. But I can always come back to it. Like, that's the other good thing about um, working on Gandam kits is that you can always come back. Like, when you forget to trim off the knob and then you put it right onto the model. So yeah, look, it's got a chest now. That looks rather fancy. Okay, now we're doing the head. All right, we can do this, we can do this. <laughs> no, no, and significant, that is the smart thing to do, especially at the moment. Uh, I will say, Gandam building is not as ridiculous as it looks. Uh, and so long as you're okay with super, super long shipping, um, like a lot of the tools and bits that I get, uh, you know, I buy them and then like they show up two, three months later. So I use a lot of the Tamiya um, nippers rather than the God Hand stuff because if I buy them from a supplier, like especially out in Japan and stuff like that, it takes ages for it to get here, but it's affordable. So Lagmeister says, is there an equivalent of One Piece's Void Century, an age that has essentially been erased? Uh, narratively, there's a few. So, yeah, Hunter was bringing up Iron-Blooded Orphans, where the, the Gundam Gundams were from what was called the Calamity Age, an era that was so violent that it's practically been erased from history between, like, automated weapons that could destroy planets uh, or sorry by automated weapons i mean like uh, mobile armor uh, that don't even require a pilot um to like super uh super effectively designed like hella top tier gandams um turner gundam has a very similar plot yes hello nuggies Um, Turner Gundam is kind of like a almost steampunk era and uh, they rediscover Gundams from years past. Uh, the thing with the thing with the Gundam franchise is it's not one timeline. So it goes through a lot. <laughs> oh, but you're all... Oh, fancy! Um, although we're actually, I'm actually doing pretty well in here. All right, uh, friends, is that coming through on the mic? Uh, also, hello. Hi. You survived. You got out. Don't worry. Day one. 24 hours remain. Uh, friends, this is the thing I was telling you about earlier on the day, is that the Swifties are in town. The uh, Swifties. The baseball people. The foodies. The gays. The foodies? Yeah, Bite, Bite of Seattle is happening downtown. <laughs> Whoever is the city planner needs to be fired. No, I reckon this is their vengeance. Somebody just, like, schedule all these events and then quit. Yeah. Uh, found out today, our manager, uh, the one that left, um, that I told you there last week was, uh, last week? Yeah. Or like, my last day? Yeah. Or my, my Friday? Uh, they definitely, uh, scheduled all of the people in the cafe to be off for the weekend and then left. So they also threw a grenade. So the manager is staying at the hotel. Uh. Yay! It is chaos! Um, uh, again, friends, uh... How, how's the audio coming across? Because it looks like it's getting picked up, but no one said anything. Elsa Red says, hi, Fee. Uh, I don't give a hot heck if the microphone picks it up. You need to have air in here. If it's a little bit of fan, people will understand. All right, everyone's saying the audio is good. See, we want you to be in. Oh no, I understand. But, you know, that's the rule. Audio is king. 
You can have shite visuals, but if it sounds like no one will forgive me. And they'll just leave silently and they won't say anything. Um, you know that's not true. Uh, the puppies have been a lot. Um, uh, Amos saw one of the neighbour dogs when we were out uh, and decided it was time to go nerds. Um, oh, and River... Uh, what did I say earlier, friends? Uh, River has been playing the role of the announcer at the Royal Ball, kindly introducing every person who has gone even near to the apartments today. And it was more like River introduces Lord and Lady Rando as they walk past the apartment. Um, also, Amos lay on my legs last night, and so my legs are fucking caning today. You're the one who let it sleep up there. It's too cute, I couldn't stop them. Um, for those of you that are playing um, Pokemon Sleep, Pokemon Sleep records the last 10 uh, loud audio moments throughout your sleep log. And four of mine was my alarm going off and me ignoring it. And the other six was me going, Amos, no. Amos, settle. Amos, no. Amos, settle. Ah. <sighs> Right, what are we doing? Oh, we're doing this bloke's face. Okay, so what do we need? We need C and... Uh, we need C and D for this one. Alright. Okay, C, you're up. Uh, G, we'll see you later. C and D. Okay, here we go. I might actually clean up some of this sprue whilst we're uh, whilst we're having a natter. Oh, did it need B? Yes, it does need B. All right. Put A back over here. Uh, so Wraith, I'm not sure how this one works. Uh, so a lot of sleep apps usually have like a um, one of these smartwatch plugins, so it's monitoring like heart rate and stuff like that. The Pokemon one, I think it uses gyros because you're supposed to put it on your mattress, but I don't have confirmation of that right now. Oh yeah, sorry. So these ones here, you see these ones that seem like they're all like uh, fecked up. Uh, those are like a hatched pattern. Kind of similar to like the the weave samurai armor, so uh, I gave it like basically an ink wash, and now I'm looking at it here on camera. Uh, I like it, I like the results, but I don't want to look at it anymore. So I'm going to clean it up while I'm chatting with you all. Um, but yeah, so I have a theory that that's how the Pokemon Sleep one works. Is it's a combination of listening and gyroscopes. but I don't know. I mean, for the most part, like, Pokemon Sleep is not something that you need to play. It's not going to be a cultural phenomenon like Pokemon Go, and the game itself is very rudimentary. Like, depending on how long and how well you sleep, according to the app, uh, when you wake up, there'll be a bunch of Pokemon snoozing around you, or around the Snorlax. And then you can give them treats. If you give them enough treats, they'll hang out with you, like, moving forward. And, like, each morning you get, like, a review of your sleep and how you did and stuff like that. And it's fine. You know, it's not a terrible thing because if you're a person who doesn't take your sleep schedule into consideration, it can get you thinking about it, you know? Like, I only tend to sleep... I always feel like I sleep a lot, and uh, I only actually sleep between, like, you know, four and six hours every night, which feels decadent. Uh, it is not the eight hours we're supposed to be getting, so I've got a long way to go. I thought I slept a lot, Lizzie. <laughs> you know? But I've been wrong before, and I'll be wrong again. Bad. 
I don't know. I just feel like it needs another ink wash after cleaning. So yeah, Asara uses their Fitbit as a sleep tracker. That's not bad. The only thing I'm apprehensive about is um, uh, the friendship mode in that. Like, you can make friends with people and you can, like, basically competitive sleep. But I remember back during the, the golden age of YouTube, did anyone else watch a PBS Idea channel? Uh, with good old Mike, I want to say Regetta, but I think I'm mispronouncing it. It's not bad. I can always clean it more if I don't like it. Um, but Mike put forward a really interesting thought, which was, like, a lot of these apps being able to track how we sleep and, you know, how uh, healthy and fit we are and things like that uh, may end up having a very dystopian side effect. And I do think about that a lot. You know? <laughs> Gear Graphic, how are you doing, friend? Watto and welcome. We've been working out the uh, the Mech Gala theme, and I was just having a little natter about um, the uh, Pokemon Sleep app that I've been uh, fucking around with. Whilst I'm uh, cleaning up. Uh, my drunken uh, line work which isn't bad which is so feckin' delicate <laughs> got pizza and garlic butter fuck yeah, that sounds awesome I haven't eaten yet but I will do very shortly I figure we'll get the uh, the headpiece put together and then I can uh, make a sani or something. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> well, no, Lizzie, I had every intention. Uh, I had every intention of getting some food in, but uh, the uh, the animals chose chaos today. And between trying to get the area set up so I could do this with you all and uh, wrangling them, like, I pushed the button the very moment I could. So. But it's fine. I'm gonna eat. I haven't forgotten. Just haven't had time. It's fine. There we go. All right, I've got the technique down now. There we go. It's fucking cool. <laughs> Intentions not as good as actually eating. All right, all right. I'll make that Sony in just a second. Tell you what, let me finish up uh, cleaning up these bits here. Um, I'm going to eat. I haven't forgotten. Five Gundam hours later. Okay, it has only been two Gundam hours, and that is not the same. But bacon, seriously, thank you for the bits, all right? Oh, 
Okay, so jumping back, jumping back. War Crimes of Fashion is currently the leading theme for the Mech Gala, the Winter Mech Gala. I like calling it the Winter Mech Gala because it implies that we have more than just this one that we've done. Uh, oh, uh, on a tangent, uh, Wraith's done the DLC for Power Wash Sim for SpongeBob. God, that's got to be a ton of fun. Uh, they have you clean the invisible boat, right? Or the invisible boat car, I forget what it's probably called. I'm not going completely do lally tap there, right? Sorry, I should lean in more when I'm doing this. Uh, and Kyle will finish Viewfinder. Nice. Uh, actually, Kyle, I had a question. Uh, how did you find the um, the VO for that one? Because I didn't know there was characters, and uh, a friend of mine DM'd me in the wee hours and went, "Why, why, why is this?" And I got shown a little sample of the VO, and I was like, "Oh my god." Uh, Campbell said, before I crash, uh, when will the gala take place? Uh, I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking like November? Because like, I won't be able to start working on it until after PAX, uh, which is end of next month. So like, I can't, I can't see us getting anything together, like, before September. So, like, you've got plenty of time. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, and Wraith was saying, yeah, you have to clean the invisible boatmobile. And it's actually invisible. Oh, that's so good. So good. Huh. I just kind of was saying that the VO did kind of annoy them. Uh, they kind of shoehorned in a mission so that the, the VO is meant to support it, but it doesn't work. The cat talks to you. Okay. And. Usually hearing that there's a talking cat in a game would be a feckin' winner. But... I don't know, like, like I said, Kimball, I know you've done, uh... You know, VO production and the ilk, so... That's why I was asking your good self, because, like... That's, that's definitely your sphere. Fine, fine. See this, friends? I'm getting bullied. Bullied into eating. <laughs> alright, alright. So first, I guess I'm making an ass of myself. And then time for battle snacks. <laughs> These hurt so bad. What happens when you have like 70 pounds of muscle to sleep on you for several hours? Oh. Oh. Ah. Ah. Ah, I don't want to. This is my job. This is how I. Back in terror is a lot of you. Right. Um, okay. 
put this little dude over here, next to his head. Uh, I shall go grab myself a Sani or something, and I'll be back with you all in just a second. Fucking terrors.
Hello there. Do -do 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 -do. <sighs> yeah, I I'm gonna leave the BRB needs T banner up just for a second because basically you're gonna get to see the sandwich from two angles. Aperios would be very proud. Ah, oh, so how are you all doing, friends? Tell me your tales. Um, it's been feckin' ages since we did, like, a, a Gandam build stream, and I realized, like, we kind of... It wasn't that we stopped doing them because I stopped enjoying doing them. It's mostly because, like, Bloodborne kind of consumed our Saturdays for a while, and the Black Watchmen, and a bunch of other stuff. And jumping back up, uh, gear graphic. How have the uh, the white scars been coming together? Because oh, it's been real fun watching everybody else's uh, uh, Warhammer minis coming together. Um, I've got my uh, my Brigador mini to to put together, so that'll be fun. And bacon. Thank you for filling the pint glass. I had this weird idea the other day, and I don't know if it's great or terrible, but what I wanted to do was get one of the Gundam re-mechanics um, set. The kind where you have um, like an internal skeleton and then all the pieces kind of clip onto it. Different from this, because like this guy here is like an action figure as a like an action figure structure where you then add the pieces onto is the re-mechanics like you build the skeleton same as and i've been thinking about what if we did that but everybody got to decorate one piece and it came together as this like collaborative project I do not. I do not doubt that the Nuggies can absolutely fucking sense the. Uh... Oh. Uh, that the Nuggies can sense the salad in play. Sorry. I'm trying to, to find a thing to show you all on the interwebs, and uh, everything was pushing down the keyboard. Yeah, gear. Welcome to the future. Angel Kalina put some uh, cat pictures in general. No one's having a bad time with more pictures. Oh, 
Oh, excuse me. Oh, so yeah, hedgehogs and kitties in general. Sorry, I didn't realise how hungry I was until I started stuffing my face. And I'm definitely looking forward, friends, to sharing with you some of these um, these no-clip archive videos. I keep looking at this one, which is like, a, yeah, an interview panel with Peter Molyneux and Peter Jackson and some other guy I should probably know. But honestly, I want to check it out first before I blast it live on Twitch.Television. But there's also... Um, the Behind Closed Doors presentation for Knights of the Old Republic before it was announced. I really want to watch that. Alright, gig rabbit. Let me show you a snippet of it while I'm uh, stuffing my face. Let's there be our beans tea. Right, lock and trail. Alright, so let's go over to main screen online. So if you haven't seen it, friends, so this is the no clip archive that they've been currently working on. These are all digitized version of old broadcast tapes and VHSs from varying commercials, games assets, etc. And nestled in there is this one. So this is the Knights of the Old Republic behind closed doors presentation. Uh, at E3 and I guess like other events now, it's pretty common for games that are going to be big to do like a behind closed doors demo for journos, which like the the public won't see. They won't get the the kind of actually. You know what? Let me just stop talking. I'm just gonna show you. Like I know it's a bit janky, but check this out. Hey, welcome to the presentation. This is the E3 presentation for Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic a new role-playing game in development at BioWare and to be published by LucasArts. So we're going to be giving you a very special early look at the game and uh, start off because it's pretty early in development, we're going to show you some of the concepts that will be driving the look of the game and talk about some of the game features. And then we're going to be showing you an actual character from Knights of the Old Republic so we can talk about some of the technology at that point. And finally we're going to show you two actual in-game areas, one of them from a very familiar setting to Star Wars fans, and another one from an all-new world. So as Derek flips through the concepts here, I'm going to be describing the main features of our game. So what you're looking at right here is a Sith Trooper, one of the many enemies that you'll be battling while playing our game. Our game is going to be real-time combat, though we will have pause and play, so you'll be able to pause the game at any time and assign orders to your characters. This game mechanic will be very familiar to those of you who have played the Baldur's Gate series. However, we do plan to have a faster paced, more action oriented combat, so there will be less pausing to break up the combat. What you're looking at here is an example of a character you might create during the character creation process. So during character creation, you're going to be able to choose between three different racial types, you'll be able to choose between six different classes, whether you want to be male or female, you'll be able to choose your name, whatever name you want. You'll be able to choose all of your skills and your feats. Essentially, you're going to be able to customize your character as much as you'd be able to customize a character in any of the other Bioware role-playing games. So the six classes we plan to have are going to include classes such as the Scout, the scoundrel, the soldier, all the way to this guy right here, the Jedi Guardian. These classes are based off of the heroic archetypes that you've seen in the movies. Examples of this would be Han Solo the Scoundrel, Luke Skywalker the Jedi, or Boba Fett the Bounty Hunter. So our game is going to be a party-based game. You'll be able to control up to three characters at any given time. Affirmative You'll feedback. Be from a pool of characters that have been pre-generated. Each of these characters will have their own personality, 
and we'll include such things as the battle droid you see right here, or a Wookiee, or another Jedi, or an exotic Twi'lek. Each of these characters is going to have a fully realized personality. They'll be able to interact with your main character. You'll be able to form friendships with them, rivalries, or even romances. So part of every Star Wars experience is the fast-paced action scenes like the space combat. Okay, so this is interesting. So this is just a recording of the presentation that would have been behind them with VO. If we were getting this demonstration at E3, we'd all be on a bunch of little like fold-out chairs with these two guys giving us a presentation in a gray windowless room. I mean, they'd probably put concept art and stuff on the walls and things like that, but... You'll be able to actually hop in and shoot down that enemy fighter uh, and gear graphic i also wish that they would release a lot of the old like star wars video game concept art but it's that weird thing of like back then they didn't think that a lot of these had value hey i've hung out there i think is you know a lot of people want to have their own uh, millennium falcon and blast around the galaxy world and there's the old republic you'll actually be able to do that this is a hyperspace freighter that you'll have and it performs a number of duties it's a home base for the player. It's a place for you to store all your characters when you're not using them. You He's can a duty. Return to it. It's sort of a safe place that you can get healed and so on. But it's also a focus for some of the more action-oriented scenes in the game. I mean, uh, Wraith, we might get some alpha gameplay in a little bit. Jill, while I'm just clipping stuff, Jill just want to watch this with me while we're doing Gandom stuff. The blaster, the thermal detonator, the lightsaber, or the double-bladed lightsaber. We're also going to have more than a hundred different enemies for you to fight. Hey! They're going to range from huge monsters such as the Dread Rancor or the Crate Dragon, all the way to battle droids and Sith Jedi like this guy right here. Uh, <laughs> this handsome fellow you're looking at right here is an example of the scoundrel class. Oh look! It's if all of Hooperstank became one person. And uh, he likes to use his skills to solve most problems. Though, as you can see, he'll also rely on his blasters. There are going to be more than 100 skills and feats in the game. And these are going to allow you to do such things as set up demolitions or take them apart, um, use stealth to break into bases. <laughs> it looks like Smash Mouth went Star systems. Wars. You'll be able to reprogram droids. You'll be able to use your persuasion on people to change their minds about things. You'll also be able to uh, break into computer systems. This girl right here can also join your party. Hey she now, has you're a Jedi. Has access to the Go get brainwashed, Darth Revan. <laughs> These powers are going to emulate any of the powers you've seen in the movies. As well, there'll be a few unique powers that are unique to our era and game. So one of the very few things we've been able to say about Knights of the Old Republic prior to E3 is that it takes place roughly 4,000 years before the time of the movies. Now, this may seem like also a the long time, the, the cadence the and quietness universe, of these devs is pretty standard for these E3 presentations. Of years. So this is actually a very ancient and spacefaring civilization. You've also got to understand the guys doing this. This might be a recorded run, or they've been doing this same speech anywhere from. So what this video is 18 minutes long, twice an hour. From an older show floors open for like eight hours so they may have done this presentation 16 times a day for three days so we're just going to pop out of that and oh! go into a model viewer where we can look at an actual character from knights of the old republic oh shit! the engine we're developing for knights of the old republic is an all-new engine that builds upon what we've learned in developing engines for role-playing games and action games as well games like neverwinter knights mdk2 and baldur's gate so this is an actual character. You'll notice that she has completely modeled fingers and facial features. She's got eyes that move and blink and lips and teeth. She's basically a yeah, very right. This is some proper into the weeds. Um, so this is very important in being able to create a very cinematic look to our characters and all the in-game actions that you'll see. Yeah, this is proper. Like, part of being able to do this is having a really good animation oh, system. 
so you'll friends we are going to end up breaking down so many of these videos this is going to be great or jerking of the of the character the animations actually flow very smoothly from one to the next which is really important in creating a realistic motion for a character especially in things like combat now another thing you'll notice is that this character actually has a number of little parts that actually move and flow as she performs her actions. And these are things like the flaps on her costume and the little bits on her hair. They're moving procedurally, which means that the character can perform any action and they'll move and flow. This allows us to do things like... Dude is explo uh, explaining like how they have like actual physics, physics systems on the clothes right now. Wookie, so that these things can actually move the way oh, they should. That must have blown some and minds back in the day. Basically, all this detail allows us to create characters that we can use in the actual game that will flow straight from a cutscene into gameplay and back, but it's your character, it's not a pre-rendered animation, so you'll see your actual character acting with this kind of emotion. So, do, 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 do. every cinematic experience, of course, is sound. and. For that reason, we want to make sure that all the dialogue in Knights of the Old Republic is fully voice acted. So this is an example right here. I knew you could do it. The Force is truly strong with you. Hey, Jen Hu! So that's an example of a line that was voice acted. Now, part of being able to pull off good voice acting is lip syncing, which normally takes a lot of time to hand animate. So with Knights of the Old Republic, we're going to use procedural lip syncing so that we can give a character... <laughs> Every time he says procedural, I'm like, man, if he was pitching this right now, it'd be like, AI-generated lip-face move! All of the dialogue for the game... Not that I think Bioware would necessarily suck it into that whole nonsense, but you know what I mean. I will never fall to the dark side. I will never fall to the dark side. <laughs> so that. that's an example of a character um, you'll be able to expect in Knights of the Old Republic. We're going to show you an actual in-game area, so you can see what the game itself looks like. So this first world we're going to be taking a look at is the most famous world in the Star Wars galaxy. You'll probably immediately recognize it. It's the world of Tatooine. <laughs> it's Blackpool! It's a small settlement built upon Tatooine. God, look at this early visual! Tatooine is By the old gods! ...that you'll be able to visit while playing our game. Okay, quick show of hands, how many of you did play through Knights of the Republic back in the day? Jungle planets or cityscapes. We really want the player to feel... Alright, good point, Wraith. They don't, they don't have sun in Blackpool. It's not been invented yet. Much like the galaxy that you saw in the movies. It's just, it's wild seeing it this early on. Uh, Asari, it's still... I mean, in my humble opinion, it's still worth a, a playthrough if you have time. ...while exploring... Uh, I've considered streaming it for you all a few times, but I always end up kind of like choking out on those that first early world. He won't be cattle crawled along a specific path. There will be a main story, but this story is not going to limit the player's actions. God, they're super quiet though. So if you look around, you can see that there's quite a few NPCs on the streets. We're actually ha we actually have more than 30 NPCs right now in this uh, small town area. We're going to be able to support many, many creatures in a given area. Uh, and says they come if they played it or watched their brothers play it. Large cityscapes or huge battles with dozens of opponents all on the screen at the same time. Dozens of opponents. God, feckin' shout out to Noclip for, for taking the time to do this stuff. Uh, Redox says, how do I feel about Star Wars Outlaws? Am I looking forward to it? Uh, I am very glad that it is happening. A big old, like, adventure game about not Jedi, uh, that's not somehow shoehorned into the... The old characters, I, I think is a great way of going. Hey! They're also going to have multiple routes to them. Uh, Andor, thank, thank you for 500 bits, you fucking legend. Or role playing. That is money I'll use to feed the guinea pigs. Uh. Alright. 
You've probably noticed driving around the streets. There have been uh, is it Sam Harris? As well as these landscapes right here. Or am I thinking of somebody else? Another one of the mini games uh, you have in the game is going to allow you to drive speeders in races hmm. against. I'd have races. to have a look at it. There'll be several speeder tracks built on some of the worlds. And you'll be able to go uh, to unless uh, numbers you're doing a bit, and I'm just uh, I'm a bit you too uh, brain dead, and I missed the joke, which could happen right now. Oh, Sam Harris is a philosopher. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, Rear Dog. I'm really excited to see people doing more interesting stuff with Star Wars in the video game space, because for a while, Star Wars was kind of very stagnant, very static in media. You know, we'd had the prequel trilogy, and then that was kind of it. Um, but for those of us who were really into it, you had the extended universe in the books, and then you had the games. And the games is where we were getting all the good shit. You know, Kyle Katarn, uh, Shadows of the Empire, uh, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, etc. Like, when those titles were doing the heavy are, lifting. Control schemes. We'll have two separate control schemes. Uh, one so for a, the where PC you skew of the game, and one for the console skew of the game. We want to really appeal to the users of either of those consoles. Uh. So that was an example of an area that's more story-based, and uh, there's a lot of character interaction and dialogue. This is an example of an area that has a lot more combat and battle going on. This is an all new world. And also, I'm kind of grateful Terrace for this right now because I'm doing a bunch of really fiddly things. Under siege by Sith troopers. And it's not fun to look at. Also, look at that early UI. Like, gear graphic. Compare this UI. Which is absolutely a uh, placeholder so as you can see to there, what they ended up shipping. We have all the visual effects and, and uh, visual graphics that you'd expect from the Star Wars universe. I mean, Wraith, me too. There's a whole bunch of things that happened around the time that, like, LucasArts' video game division got kind of shuttered uh, before the acquisition. And the amount of stuff that just ended up dying so off, you know. You can see a whole bunch uh, of Star Wars Battlefront Part 3. Of the really cool thing about this era um, is a lot of Jedi and a lot of Sith. The continuation around, so of Ravensoft's like uh, Jedi on. series. And uh, up ahead, you'll notice that the lightsabers are actually blurring the very same way they do in the movies. <laughs> this whole thing couldn't be more of a scripted demo. 50 Beard of Bag of Skip says this character can't actually do anything more than walk around. Because uh, that was absolutely bespoke animation right there. Get to the evacuation shuttle, young Padawan. <laughs> the fate of the Republic depends on it. Yeah, if you ever wonder, like, what is the stuff that so you miss from behind the scenes, the video games industry, it's just like this. In the combat, we're going to have a lot of special moves, uh, force powers and feats and a number of different tactics and so on that you can choose to make the combat... Oh no, and Wraith, sorry, I, I got distracted by this and by putting together Gandams, but yeah. I would have loved to have seen Dark Forces as a series continue to expand, because there was so much potential to it, you know? ...for Knights of the Old Republic. Um, basically, very early on, we made some decisions that would allow us to create the kind of environments that we needed to create for the Star Wars universe. Um, Typically, with a graphic engine, the limitations really dictate the way you're able to build the art. And we wanted to sort of turn that around so that we would basically be able to create whatever we needed to in terms of environments. So you'll notice that actually out on that platform over there, there are people walking around. Those people are actually the same size as the main character. So it gives you an idea how huge that building is over there. And as you look across the city, it gives you an idea how really huge this entire area is. And basically what that means <laughs> is we're able to create environments that are as big Sorry, as Wraith was saying that uh, Knights of the Old Republic as well, they'll never save so Caden in Mass Effect. Very He'll always pay for his Carthasani crimes. In the Star Wars universe. But, uh, the he knows what he did. We better get to that ship there, so we better get moving. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
but yeah, this whole demo, intended for journalists, of course, is completely scripted in situations. Like, the UI is fake. All the uh, situations that are happening are all, like, bespoke anims and the ilk. Like, I'm kind of glad that, um, I guess, kimball has uh, gone and got some sleep because this would probably give them fucking PTSD from doing E3 demos and shit. Yeah! You'll notice no one in the audience is cheering. So but with Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, we want to create the impression that you, the player, are experiencing something similar to as though there's a great Star Wars film out there that no one's ever seen before, but you get to unfold the story as its hero. Uh, so that's the E3 presentation. If anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Via email. Hey, there we go. That was a that was a lovely little look into some some video games history, um, and if I had to guess, I would say that was the recorded um, presentation. So either the one they used to practice the presentation, or um, one they did ahead of time. I find this fascinating. Uh, Air Dragon says uh, they played Final Fantasy XIV with the few people that worked on uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. Yeah. Uh, at a point, The Old Republic, as in the MMO one... Oh, sorry, let me put some jams on. Uh, what do you fancy, friends? Do you want more of the 2000s menu music? Do you want some, some funky, fresh future funk? Uh, some Jet Set Radio vibes? What are, you, what are you feeling, friends? What are you feeling? Um, but yeah, the uh, online Knights of the Republic game had one of the like largest staffs. Staffs ah, had a huge staff, and you can't swing a cat in the games industry for not like people who worked on it. Uh, at one period, they had like the biggest like community team of any project, and yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people survived that game. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm glad it went on to do well, but, like, EA don't give a hot fuck about people. We, this is well known. Uh, sorry, wants the chill. Let me see what I've got in chill. Uh, I've got the zelda -y chills ready to go. <laughs> Lo-fi beats to hail Zeon to. Oh, my life. Criminals a lot here. Where am I? Where are my smooth jams? There we go. Oh god! Fucking Zelda, you're up here. I need you down here. All right, just get this uh, antenna done. But whilst that was going on, look at this little guy's face. Yeah. Look at that. That iconic red ashtray face. But no, I do think we're going to be... Oi! Keep playing you. I do think we'll be going through a lot of the um, no clip archives work. Because there's so much to it. Oh, hang on. I was so distracted by Knights of the Old Republic, I forgot to trim the undergate on this one. Absolute bad word. Nearly said some very bad words there myself. <sighs> Where are my toothpicks at? There we go. Friends, one of the uh, the things that you learn from building Gandams is not how to do things perfectly. It's how to uh, unfuck things that you yourself have caused problems on. So here, what I did is I put the uh, the iconic V on the helm, but I didn't finish the undergating here. 
So now I'm going to pop it off by pulling off like the face plate and then jamming this back out. Son of a bad word. Which is so much easier said than done. Really? The toothpick has said no. Anyway, where were we? No, I'm just... It's fascinating to see that kind of early games industry presentation just being laid bare. Because... You know what? I might... You know what? I might be able to just trim the gate now it's far enough out. There we go. And if I can get this... Seated. Okay, there we go. There we go. See, fixed it. Look at that. Look at that face. Hang on. Let me use one of my tiny spotlights to show you. So you can see it better. Oh, yes. Look at his face. It's very important. Oh yeah, I got these things a while back, and I used them for like Gundam photography and stuff, but they basically look like little tiny um, set lights. No. Alright, so now we're gonna do leg armor. My least my least favorite spots. Ah, <sighs> um, and right, that sounds fascinating. I need to go get a big bag or something. Uh, significant says found more stains. Vote leave it or spot clean with oxy. Uh, do you mean more stains on clothes? Or just in heck in general. Coffee. All right, I love you all. Uh, we're 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 kicking the tunes up a, a notch. There we go. Otherwise, I'm going for a nap. Those uh, I love those Zelda and Chill albums, but like. That's, that's sleepy times. Um, on the bed skirt. A skirt specifically to wear in bed? Oh, that sounds right fancy. Anyway, mate, your boy's got a face. He's got a proper face. Yeah. Uh, Ragnar, a lot of the Gundam OSTs are sadly very, very, very copywritten controlled, and they're not, not many of them are good. See, uh, Eric was giving me heck the other day because I recommended Turner Gundam, and I didn't warn him that the, uh, the OP tune is just bad. Like, I find the 8th MS Team one to be right on the edge of being awful. But it's the only thing about a lot of those shows that really dates them. Alright, where are my beans? Uh, these are so... We've got... B here, and... Okay. 
Ah, okay, these are some of the pieces we've been working on. We'll put the C's over here for now. Okay. Whoa, okay. Hunter, the G Gundam opening is fucking brilliant. They're not all stinkers. They're not all stinkers. But... Like, you've got to admit, like, it's it's full-on cheese, which works really well for G Gundam. Doesn't work so well for, for some of the more serious ones. Okay, so I need 11 and 9. Oh, right there. Uh, this is all Submarla, so I don't have to worry about trim lines. Yeah, I called it Submarlis. I'm cool like that. People, t people just don't know how cool I am. And frankly, it's a crime. Like, I should be able to report it as a crime. 911, what's your emergency? Uh, people on the internet don't know how cool I am. Oh my god, sir, please... Please stay where you are. We're sending over um, not cops because uh, <laughs> we don't stand that bullshit here. <laughs> Sorry. I know I've got uh, mischief on the brain today. I think it's because my drunk ass messaged people that I want to do cool shit with and, you know, one of them actually responded. Like, no guarantee it'll happen, which is why I don't want to tell you about it yet, friends, because I don't want to jinx it. But if it does, we will have the fucking best day, let me tell you. Oh, so there we go. That fancy leg. <laughs> Get right up in there. Right up in there! Oh, there we go. Oh, it's an extender! so good not having to actually build this shit from scratch. No one knows how cool we are. Uh, oh, no, I need... Um, I'm not quite ready for that. I need D4, which might need some more cleaning. Which is this one here that we were working on uh, before Sani time. B6. Oh yeah, that definitely needs cleaning. But it's the nice soft plastic, so it jobs are good. In. There we go. See, here we go. Funky summer jams. I love those Zelda and Chill albums, don't get me wrong. I just... Just hits nap time so fast. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm gonna be fascinated to see how much of like the behind the scenes stuff starts coming out because, especially now, like as video games become more and more big business, you know, especially companies like Sony and Microsoft, Nintendo, they're gonna be way more guarded about like what does and doesn't get out there into the world, you know, because. Hey, there's a lot of stuff that has happened and been done over the years that I'm sure a lot of the big three would love if it was forgotten. But like, we're just, we're hitting this point where people, people genuinely give a shit and the kinds of people involved have been so far out of the industry, they don't give a hot fuck anymore. If it makes you feel any better, significant, I'm I'm over here cleaning as well. Just uh, softly cleaning up this uh, this Gundam hatching.
<laughs> My girlfriend broke up with me because I wouldn't stop listening to Linkin Park, but in the end, it didn't really matter. <laughs> Fucking. Fucking yo. Video. Uh, how's things going with you, numbers? Uh, Fiona was telling me that there is, like, it is Sportapalooza this weekend. So, along with uh, Night of the Living Swifties, uh, and apparently the Bites Festival is this weekend as well, and the uh, Capitol Hill Block Party. I might, uh, I might revisit the hatching, because it's not quite equal. Hang on. I don't know if you can... Oh, no, that's way too far away. Sorry, friends. But I'm going to revisit that one. Um, so I'm saying, so yeah, the Toronto Blue Jays are in to play the Mariners, which means there's shit ton of people from Vancouver into town. Okay. That feels like it's uh, it's going to be hashtag a lot. Sorry, sis. Did anyone spot the gnome sketch they put in Discord? I see the sketch. Like it looks like it's going to be something real cool. Ragnar's asking if it's next to the lantern. Sorry. <laughs> I just... I just... I can't help it. can't help it. Right. Okay. 16 and 17. That's 15 and 16. That's these two motherhubs here. Uh, Lizzie, I'm with you there. American football is the weird one, but uh, when someone described it to me as um, what if rugby was turn-based, um, that has, one, helped explain it to me so much more and has always made me laugh. You know, what if rugby but uh, Final Fantasy Tactics? Baseball does not have a clock. And it can go on for quite some time. Though the king of no fucks given is still cricket, uh, which ends when people just agree that it does. Ray said there should be more tactics based sports games. Yo, I'm hoping Jugger takes off in my lifetime. Like, who doesn't want to see a game where, like, what, two swords, two spears, two shields, uh, and a quick. Uh, and some jugger leagues allow someone with a fucking chain flail. Oh yeah, Ragnar, we've talked about this before, haven't we? That jugger is actually a recognized sport in Germany. Uh, which is fucking cool. Oh, look at this. I'm putting these together. Except for I'm not the one that has to do it. Love to see it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I need an F. Well, an F, I think. E, N. Where are my Fs at? 
Oh, here we go. Uh, F8, let's get that shin going. Um... I mean, it would certainly be interesting. It was real sad to see um, Blaseball go under, because uh, Quinz's work on that was real good. Um... <laughs> oh, that's where it was, Lizzie. Should have known. Should have known. Crimes were afoot. No. I also, I love the fact that the people make games break down of Blaseball was so good. The the team behind it brought him on to do the season recaps of OG Blaseball. Uh, someone in uh, the game dev circles I frequent described Blaseball's rise and fall as kind of like being when a British sitcom is picked up by an American studio. Like... There's no way they're going to get it, and it won't scale. And I've been thinking about it a lot. Because we've been talking a lot about, like, group experiential titles. And, like, with Blaseball, there's no way you can yes and at a mobile game level, right? Alright, let's get your little feedies on. God, not having to do the knee joints, by the way, friends, is currently proving to be one of my favorite things about this whole experience. Oh, this looks exceedingly complicated. Sorry. So basically for the calf muscles here, so we've got these two bits that need to come together and each of those is this along here. So that's going to be uh, interesting. All right, it's time to get the E's and C's out. Ah! Oh, you can go down here for a second. I'll know when we all need it. I just, sorry, I just. Blaseball was one of those projects I desperately wanted to be a commercial success as well. And there was no way it was going to be. But, uh, I'm an idealist. I actually got into a discussion with a friend this week about video games publishing. And the thing is, they're a very smart individual. They're very successful in video games. And, like, when they talk about games publishing, they're not talking about it in theory. They are literally in the process of doing it. They're currently looking to raise funds, and they're doing real good. But my problem is I'm an idealist in that... Oh, Verdant Flow, snack well. Um, and if you make something fancy, be sure to make others jealous. Um, but yeah, they got talking about... Uh, sorry, we were nattering back and forth at some silly o'clock hour this week. And I mentioned that I'm still very frustrated that I can't find funding for, for smaller teams. Or, I should say that I couldn't. I haven't been doing it for a while. Uh, I used to do it a lot, but, like, there's no money, and the people that know me have no money to go around. Gone are the days where I could just, like, introduce some people and their indie game would get funded, you know what I mean? But, um... Yeah, so I was talking to Friendo last night, uh, not last night, night before. And I was saying again how, like, it frustrates me because I work with teams that only want about, like, $20,000 to bring their game to market. And he was saying, and correctly so, that asking for, for so little is basically a death nail. Like, if you only need $20,000 to finish your game, like, a publisher is going to take that as either a joke or you don't know what you're talking about because... If you absconded with 20k, it would cost them more to sue you to get that 20k back if you didn't deliver, right? And 
it also means that you're unaware of like additional costings and how bad it is to actually like produce things and stuff like that like asking for so little is usually a very 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 bad maneuver and i understand that like i just I just so desperately wish it wasn't the case, you know? Alright, here's an E and a C, so we'll... We'll do one of the carbs, and then we'll do another set. Yeah. Just hang out here. You know what I mean? It's like... Sometimes... And this is where I kind of fail in the games, uh, the games industry, is like... I know the realities of it, but sometimes my... My idealism, my my love of games, gets in the way. I think it's stupid that we can't fund small budget projects like that, you know. But there is a friendo that I talked to, a fair wedge, who has a lot of very very smart business ideas and how that actually could be done, you know. And I respect my friendo, even though like. I respect my friendo because, like, he's in the projects of, as I was saying, of raising funds. And he's gonna do it. Like, it's, it's gonna be successful. Oh, is there anything else from E on these guys? No, we can put you back. But uh, we, may need our, we may need our Fs to return, you know? Actually, let's keep them in the C, F, and... Yeah, let's keep them in combo so I don't lose what's where. Um, I just... The games industry as a whole, especially when it comes to funding, is so infuriating that the amount of times we see a game fail because how it's being published or how it's being handled, a lot of those are like systematic problems inherent with the way that they're funding them and the way they're doing the business but that's how they do business so they wouldn't uh, angel cleaner says can you double the asking price and bank the extra uh, i mean there'd be ways to make it get all wibbly wobbly marketing's usually a good one um potentially hire an additional person even if they're a bit superfluous like bulking it up to like 100k isn't impossible it feels a little dishonest um but you know what if your business plan checks out and you get approved by a publisher then you know that's that's their choice at that point, you know. Uh, sorry, jumping get back in. Wraith was saying, like, if you're doing things right, 20k shouldn't be enough to cover one person's salary for a year of dev work. Well, so the thing that I, the team that I was dealing with is like they'd done the bulk of the work. They just they needed to be able to like knuckle down and just focus on it full time, just to get it to market. You know, get it like across the finish line. But it just it irks me because like there are tons of people in that middle space that would do incredible work given like stability in a publishing deal but you know they don't need a team of 15 they just need to be able to do the thing uh, anyway I only bring this up because like for as much as I talk a very very good game and I do understand the biz dev and how it's done but sometimes sometimes my patience with the the funding game and how it goes about uh, I I've, sometimes I can't hide my disdain for it you know you know the fact that teams like uh, like ID at Xbox and stuff like that don't have a a system for working through like micro publishing is frustrating because the other thing of um, why people don't want to publish tiny projects is because the amount of time it takes you to draw up contracts um, and get things ready is more than you may necessarily make even if the game turns a profit and it's 
very frustrating. <sighs> just, I just want to be able to help my friends make really fucking cool games without having to, you know, sell souls and implement this, <laughs> buzz that off into the uh, the stratosphere. Yeah, without having to. I don't know, give up everything that makes those creative projects worth it, you know? I wish there was a better, like, pipeline of taking, you know, titles from Itch.io and turning them into, like, profitable games. But Itch is its own real beast. Itch is the video game equivalent of, like, the artist alley at a convention, you know? Yeah, well, it's the Angel Kalina. Here's a fucked up thing about, like, publishing and, um... This does extend to a lot of business practices as a whole. Not spending all the money you are given is actually a mark against you. I know. It's I'm saying it out loud. It's dumb and stupid. It's feckin' dumb and feckin' stupid. Oh, hang on, I need to make sure I just... Uh, yeah, I clicked off the right one. Like, it should not be the case. Yeah, here we are. Um, what's usually wild is like around the uh, the end of the fiscal year, loads of teams will suddenly start like throwing cash around at like marketing budgets and stuff. Like, you ever wondered why sometimes you see like a big surge of like sponsored content around about like, you know, February, March, April? It's teams going like, oh shit, we didn't spend that budget we got given. Oh, beans. If we don't spend this budget, we'll get less next year. It's fucking wild. Small studio funding, I guess as a whole, is just a bizarre world to live in. Anyway, I forget my point is where I was dragging on with this conversation. I've said this multiple times, I'll say it again. Um, hey! <laughs> Jay, how in the hot heck you doing? Boss Coast, go home! Hello, hello, hello. Chaos Arbitrum, Jay, uh, Midranda, Reese, Krypton, how goes it, friends? Coming in, coming in! Yeah, if you want to drink and talk about uh, Gandams, welcome to the feckin' after party, yo. We're about this. Uh, Jay, we're just building Gundams and chatting today, so come on in. Wiv and Flames, good to see you. Kick off your shoes. Uh, help yourself to the bar. Like, this is basically a lock-in. But how are you doing, friends? Uh, Wibben says their partner started getting into Gundam. Nice. Um, if you ever want to... If you ever need help translating uh, Gandam speak into people speak, uh, I now speak both fluently. Uh, and Dice Goddess Watto and welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, okay, so TLDR, um, alongside building beefcake arms here, where's the, where's the box? Check this mother hubbard out. This is what I'm currently working on. Beefcake arms. This thing is a behemoth. Uh, we've also been talking about our next Gundam building contest, the Mech Gala. Uh, we haven't decided on the theme fully. Uh, but uh, the current provide, uh, prevailing theme is, what was it, um, uh, fashion war crimes. Oh yeah, I mean, Women Flames, Lance is feckin' brilliant. You don't need me to tell you that. But then I'm a huge fan of Kill Six Billion Demons, so... 
of course I'd say, take that and give me giant robots. Uh, which, if you haven't read Kill 6 Billion Demons, uh, it's all online. Like, the hardback copies are real nice, but you can just read it. And it's really fucking good. <laughs> Yeah, Jetman J is super cool. And also, because, friends, we were talking about um, people make games earlier. They did a whole episode on uh, the same individual that uh, that writes and draws Kill 6 Billion Demons did a competitive webcomic RTS. Well, more like a turn-based tactics game, but, yeah. It was fucking wild. Uh, oh, so I need F4, then F3. Um, but yeah, so the Gundam I'm putting together is a special one. Uh, it's still a traditional model kit, but the internal frame is basically an action figure. And C3. So that's what I've been working on. Yeah, we're working on the theme for our next mech building contest, which is going to be the Mech Gala. And talking about nonsense. Uh, actually, Ragnar, uh, Gundam is a... Every Gundam series in three words. Kids do war crime. <laughs> or, oops, all war crimes is also valid. Um, but yeah, Jay, what were you playing? What were you up to? Tell me your tales. We're just having a building day and hanging out, y'all. Uh, I was... I guess waxing a little bit romantic about, like, how video games get published and how I get frustrated about that. But... But that's just me on any day that ends in Y. Uh, Dice Goddess says, I was super fond of G Gundam, personally. That means you have taste. Uh, actually, Dice Goddess, I started off today by showing people um, the true Murica Gundam... Uh, the Neo Americas uh, Gundam Maximus or Maximum. Yo! Women Flame says that Jay was doing a birthday boss. Well, oh, Jay, if you're still lurking, happy birthday, friend. I hope you had a fucking great time. That sounds excellent. Oh, that's why the longship is the after party. All right. Well, like I said, help yourself to the bar. Don't get in any trouble. Um, beware any of the bottles with a, a skull on them. They're not lethal, but you may wish for the sweet release of death the next morning. Smallest waffle, what and welcome. <laughs> Sexy Optimus Prime. Look, Optimus Prime fucks. This is this is a well known fact throughout the Transformers fandom. Oh, uh, Moose, if the bottle itself is a skull, you're usually fine, unless it's got a tiny sombrero on it, in which case, uh, that's also death. Uh, sorry, I, I, I think about Vodkila a lot more than I should. Sorry, as I'm sure I've told you this like 8,000 times, but, uh, I was once at a house party and I had this young lad tell me to my face... Oh, I can't get drunk. Yeah, I can just, I can drink and I can drink and I'm just fine. To which I went, bet. Uh, and after several glasses of vodka, uh, he was not okay. As my friend would like to say, nobody gets hangovers until they do. But he also used to be a big proponent of if you're ever hungover, lie. Don't tell people you're hungover. Uh, I don't believe in that philosophy. But mainly because I find hangovers kind of a little relaxing, so. 
Oh, Spider Kumo, what a welcome. Ooh. And Kumo, what was your first uh, your first Gumpler build? What was your first Gundam? Gender... <laughs> Real Hunter says, Vodkila sounds like the kind of beverage that needs a few Starburst dissolved in it. Hunter, there was actually a place up in Richmond, you know, the place where Ted Lasso's filmed, uh, that used to do, yeah, Opal Fruit Starburst um, themed bevies. Alright, where do you go? Alright, we're just going to pretend that I didn't leave this on. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I, I absolutely didn't leave that nubbin on the leg. Uh, Gundam Michaels from Was Witch Mercury. Uh, I probably know the one you mean, but I'm being a... Being a stupid right now. Wraith, I probably am showing my age with the uh, calling my awful fruits, but I have a few friends that are still violently against calling them Starburst. Apparently, it was to do with international branding and um, confusion about uh, opal fruits and opiates. I don't know how true that second one is, but... I, Wraith, I still remember it's vastly superior... Uh, the Snickers' vastly superior cousin that... Oh, no! Oh, my word, that just snapped clean off! Fuck! That's not supposed to do that. It's all right. It's cool. It's just, it's just war damage. It's fine. It's fine. It's just a little snapped. Fuck. All right. Well, it's got character. It happens. It happens. Uh, I might... <laughs> Sorry, bust out the oo glue. I could have lived my whole life without the term oo glue being added to my vocabulary, yet here we are. It's long and black and slender. Glue-woo. God, fuck. Go to the Shadow Realm and think about what you just said, all of you. Um, but yeah, no, so, um, that sounds feckin' cool, uh, Spider Kumo, and I guess any of you that want to get into this, like, okay, this is a pretty complicated kit, even with the, um, the action figure base and, you know, the skeleton kind of pre-made, and that's cool, it's not the most complicated kit I've got staring at me, but it's got cool beefcake arms and I want to build it, but... I love doing, like, the entry grade kits, the SD Gundam kits. Um, if y'all haven't checked out my uh, my little TikTok uh, corner of the internet, it's mostly just Will's drunk, Will's showing off Gundams. Um, but yeah, sorry, with this one, with the, the crack across there, you can't quite see it. Um, but to repair it, this particular plastic, it's not showing up on this camera, but it has, like, a coating, like a sheen. And uh, my worry is gluing it into place may result in um, it melting the uh, the outer sheen. So, oh yes, and as Wraith says, for anyone who wants to get into this, we're still trying to decide what the theme is for the Mech Gala. Uh, fashion war crimes. I'm. I like it thematically, but it doesn't feel like one I want to jump around on. Oh yeah, but uh, so real hunter. What makes me a little bit um, salty about that is that that was a sponsored event, so they paid Adam Savage to build that Gandam. And I don't know. There's a, there's a part of me that's like, 
Oh, we built that Gundam just for the fun of it. Don't have to bully me into doing it. You know what I mean? I'm salty. I'm salty. Okay, so we need you over here. So the other parts of B. And we'll get a different C. So we want a different C and a different F. Oh man. Oh, I think that's that there. Yeah, there we go. And there's the F. So yeah, got different C, got the B, and the D's there, lol. <laughs> I mean, holy boss crusader, if anyone at Bandai wants to fucking sponsor me to do this, I already love it. You know? Like, this lot, I guess Liquid Death, uh, I probably could use a gin company sponsoring me, it'd save me some cash, right? Oh, also, if you do go check out my little uh, TikToks, uh, you can see Glow in the Dark Wine, which I had last night, which inspired me to contact some very, very uh, prevalent people in the uh, in the media space, and I actually got responded. I'm very good. Oh. Yeah, no, Spider Kumo, I should do that. Uh, if you scroll down just below into the doobly-doo, it'll have my my different extra stuff. I'm not saying please follow me on TikTok because, you know, I'm a big deal over there. I have one video that went viral, and it is of my kitchen. <laughs> um, but I make a bunch of dumb little Gundam videos because it makes me laugh. You know, I'm very much of the philosophy that I just make stuff that I would want to go back and rewatch. And if other people like it, then great. If they don't, then I lost nothing. Oh yes, and Wraith, I did fix the uh, the Discord link. I forget who it was that pointed it out, but yeah, it should be fixed now. Mobile Gala SF Gundam. <laughs> not bad, Lagmeister, not bad. Okay, Wraith, that is a good point. All of the Gundam builds, like, including this one, are technically sponsored builds because you sent them, you lot sent them to me. This particular kit that I'm doing today was actually held captive by uh, UPS. Not intentionally. I, not intentionally, but the store where we had our P.O. box closed with no warning. And so, like... I got this message saying that my package has been delivered, and I tried contacting the store, and it was like, this number is out of service. I'm like, fucking nanny? Nanny the piss shed, what? So yeah, I had to go through, like, absolute, like, hoops and boundaries to try and get our stuff back. Uh, I even got into blazing row this guy on the text and the phone support because he kept telling me no stores open i'm like no it is not open i've been there the sign in the window says closed indefinitely oh and lizzie thank you for sorting that yeah now if you want to follow people on tiktok who will give you interesting and useful information uh, basically, Fallen London, Chet Falazak, and Zalavir. Uh, Zalavir Nelson Jr., if you haven't met him. Like, those are my three recommendations. Follow those three accounts, and they cover a large swath of, like, how to, how to learn and how to understand games industry stuff. And plus, they're all very entertaining. I gotta clean up this uh, leg piece though before we uh, continue. <laughs> Moose says, theme suggestion, hot labor summer, Gundams on strike. <laughs> what would Gundams be striking? Uh, we're gonna be aiming for a winter gala, but we could do that. Gundams on strike. 
Uh, Holy Bus Crusader, the answer is yes. Um, this time of year is... I'm not fishing. I am not fishing. I'm just letting you all know. Uh, this time of year, when it comes to streaming and things, is very quiet. Um, friends IRL have had to put up with me freaking out pretty much every summer. Because I'm like, uh, once, you know, the numbers start going down and things start getting a bit scary. And I'm like, nope, this is it. You know, this is the death of the longship. I fucked up. I failed everybody. Yada, yada. This happens every year. So I just want to prefix with that. Um, but this is also a difficult year for everybody. You know, not just for not just for me, not just for you know people in the the Twitchian space. This is a difficult year for everyone. You know, like games industry is getting brutalized right now. So I don't want to. You know, I'm able to pay my bills and eat by being a person who streams and does video game consultancy. That's fucking powerful. There are tons of people who aren't even close to that lucky. Um, so, yeah. The TLDR is... We'll get the PO box back up once I've got the cash to do so. Um, we don't have that at the moment. So, it's a case of not if, but when. Because I know uh, Kimball and Asari and a bunch of other people, uh, they want to do... Oh, sorry. I thought I'd sorry. I thought I'd fucked up because I clipped this one together. And then I looked at this and went, "Oh, that's there." I put this together. And I'm like, "Oh, those vents are cool." Wait, why aren't they on the other side? And I just had to bend the knee to just remind myself, like, "Oh no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine." Uh, for those of you who are new here, I always fuck up the knees. They're my absolute bane. In fact, we've been doing like just drink and build sessions on Discord. By which I mean, I build Gundams and drink, and we all just natter. Where I'll just intermittently punctuate a whole ass sentence with, with FUCKING KNEES! Because I've just busted them. Um, and yeah, so, uh, sorry, as soon as, like, as soon as the P.O. box is up, I will let you all know. Um, but yeah, this is a very quiet time of year, so I don't expect it to be for a, a little bit. Um, but I know it's going to happen, so so there's that. Oh, I forgot to put this bit on. <laughs> Operation Soggy Sock has been hanging over me for a thousand years. Like, I don't, I like, I don't even know what's real anymore. Secret Discord has been, has, hasn't messed with me in so long. I don't know if they're playing the long haul or if, you know, I don't know if the halls of stealth have fallen silent. I was never allowed to see it, so I don't know. He says, Secret Discord is not, not quiet. What? Don't you confuse me with double negatives. What's that Scooby-Doo quote? <laughs> Don't you say that to me. You know the concept of time confuses me. Oh, sorry, that little cheeky grin there was uh, me just mentally reminding myself that uh, uh, I asked a friend if they'd come around and do um, photography for my Gandams at some point. Oh, it's the other, it's the other one of these I needed to get. Uh, yes, I know that's possibly one of the saddest things that I've said, but I've built loads of really, really good Gundams, but I can't I'm not good at photography. Like, and I want, I want, I want my gandams to look pretty. So I'm gonna hit them up about that. Um, oh, Wraith, So the gnome garden's been doing really well. Gnomes haven't gone missing since the last big thievery. Um, 
Uh, although the gnome garden, their vines were overgrowing a bit, and I was tired and hungover walking the dogs one morning. And one of their vines caught me in the face and gave me this huge, like, scratch mark across my forehead, making me look like some fucking Mad Max villain. And, Wraith, I know what you mean. I actually did sneak a Gundam into the Fairy Garden one time. I think I told you about that. Uh, and they were so impressed that they replaced it with the cheap action figure version. And I think they kept the Gundam I put in there. Which, um... Yeah. And, Wraith, Super Me Too as well. Like, I'm so glad it's doing well. The, um, the Fairy Garden throughout Pride Month is always fucking rad. Uh, Angel Cleaner, we don't have a fairy garden, but one of our neighbors uh, has put one together, and it's really fucking cute. And uh, they decorate it seasonally. Um, we do have a little guy corner in our apartment. Uh, I think it's our neighbors uh, beneath us. But they put up a little post-it note that just says, little guy corner. That's why the other day I might have been live, when Fiona kind of rushed in wild-eyed. I was like... I need your smallest Gundam. I was like, I got you. Uh, so, so far, there's like... There's a tiny fraggle. There's a penguin covered in egg. There's a Gundam. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see if it takes off. Like, our apartments don't suck, but the company that manages our apartments isn't great. So... I think a lot of us who live in this little block have just accepted the fact that if we want this area to be nice, it's on us. Um, but since the water leak, like, we have real good relations with uh, our little row, so our upstairs and downstairs neighbours. Um, and then there's the guy that plays Sea of Thieves who's in, like, the back corner. He's real sweet. I actually invited him to come play Sea of Thieves with the longship. Uh, I don't know if he's joined, but, uh, like, he's not a PvP player and uh, has not been very good at PvP. So that means that, like, some of the areas have been a bit tricky, which is all fair and good. But I'm just, like, I was chatting to him about this and I just kept thinking, yo, if I could lend you, like, Deus and Tobias for a day, then you would know the true power of Sea of Thieves. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, I'm going off on wild tangents here. So yeah, the TLDR is we don't have a fairy garden, but there is one on the block, and it's fucking cute as shit. I don't know. It's been interesting to see... I guess how lockdown kind of changed everybody. Like, I know it's different for different parts of the world, and I'm not saying that, you know, the fucking plague was good by any re means, but what's been interesting is, especially around this area, is people have gotten way more, I don't know, communal? And, like, I couldn't tell you if it was something that was intentional, or if it's just coincidental, or maybe I didn't realize beforehand, because I wasn't paying attention, but... It's been real nice, you know? We've got share libraries around the area. Um, there's the free pantry that bailed our house out, house out the fire a few times. I got nothing but love and respect for peeps that do those uh, free pantries. Like, the last time we needed it, like, we were super broke and out of food. Um, someone in the area had grown fresh bok choy, and that was in there. Like, fuck yeah. I don't know. Just gives me hope for humanity, you know? What am I doing? F! God, sorry, I completely lost my train of thought.
Oh no! Gear was saying that they were struggling to think of who they were before the pandemic, and like, they were fucking weird. Not good weird, but like, Reddit weird. Hey, we all, we all go through our phases, yo. The important part is, you made it out, friend. You made it out. Oh, actually, I was supposed to do these bits next. Newt, newt. God, I love the pieces where you can just clip them off at the fucking base. No faff. No fuss. No moss. Aw. Hey. The great thing about happiness, it always comes back. Gear says they're going to stop painting, it's getting harder to stare at. Hey, no worry. I mean, I'm going to be here for a while. Aww. And significant figures, like, I'm sorry you're going through that. It was just, it was such a strange time. We'll be talking about this for, you know, for the rest of, and for some of us, beyond our natural lives. Sorry, I'm just getting the uh, the knee bits of this together. Okay, I feel like I already fucked up and snapped a piece so far, so I'm just trying to not do that again. Uh, sorry, friends, I didn't mean to bring up uh, heavy topics. That's on me, being a bad host here. One of the definite good things that came out of it is, like, people now really do understand, like digital communities and how important they are and how important, you know, f the friends you make online are legit. It's, they're not just a weird person that you met on World of Warcraft or the Something Awful forums. You know? And it's been real nice to see that <sighs> legitimized feels like the wrong way to phrase it, you know, but I mean, smallest waffle. At least you did it. Um, <laughs> most burnout. Streaming's a difficult thing to maintain for feckin' sure. And I... I try and say without being discouraging to people, it's like... I was doing this for years before I met most of you. Um, in fact, I got taught by Fred and Emily when they came to CA when we did our first live stream. And that was 2012, 2013. So that was when I first started doing streaming. And I'd done YouTube stuff before that. Like, uh, Hunter was the, the internet is only 30 years old. All of this is new and magical. It is. And for both good and ill, I love that. Because, you know, this digital world is ours. That makes me really fucking happy. Hey, Angel Kalina, you have nothing to apologize for, friend. Like, life comes at us fast. And that's just how it be. I flip from being uh, the the personable chipper bugger you see now to being a miserable twat sometimes. Uh, Gigraph is now back to doing uh, big brush work. Uh, no worry. I'm gonna go get um, some water in a second and give my uh, my hands a bit of a stretch. Pop chop. Oh, it's up on the toolbox. Uh, though, um, I got one of the bugs with it earlier, and it scared the nuggies, and so they were they were hiding a bit earlier. Oh, it, it took a while before um, uh, Atticus would say hi to me. Oh. Yeah, it was just, I was one I hit, 
the clack was like the thunder of death. Sorry, the Doom Slayer is what we've named the um, uh, the electric fly swatter that Fiona got. Uh, mainly because every time I hear, I hold it, I just start hearing BFG division. <laughs> Smallest waffle. I remember. I feckin' remember. I think it's bullshit and chips that Twitch took that away, but you know, fucking whatever, Mr. The Twitch. I'm not salty. I'm not salty, said Will, being loudly salty. Uh, Holy Boss, I have seen the um, the anti-bug salt guns. Um, I just... Fiona and I currently have a, a no nerf guns weapon. Uh, no nerf weapons policy in the house. Um, which we adopted during lockdown so we didn't end up fucking killing each other. Um, because we're both competitive. Um, and uh, very, 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 very competitive. So not just competitive, but very competitive. And the other word that I was grasping for... Stubborn, that's it. Um, and I worry the salt guns would be like the, you know, the start of a, an escalation. It's a co-op game, but I'm winning. Ah, yes. Bacon, I mean, you were there for the, um, for the Overcooked streams, right? Because that sums those up perfectly. I know it's a Penny Arcade quote, but just... Oh, time travel's real. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, sorry, members. Yitzy fish! Yeah, I, I did have a little, a, a little breakdown. But the constantly moving the bus every time it went up the ramp, I thought I was going to vomit from laughing. Sorry, I'm doing that thing where I should be doing this in front of you all. <laughs> the dogs have activated. No, I'm sorry, and Bacon, thank you for the bits, friend. Puppies! Don't make me get the squirty bottle! I'll do it. You're in trouble. No. no. <laughs> Yelling at the dogs. You got dogged on. Ah, <laughs> uh, the classics. Like. I know I've said this before, I'm still glad we got to do the whole thing over at Gameworks when we had the opportunity. Like, that... That isn't something that I think could be done again, but I'm so glad we got the opportunity to do it when we had the chance, you know what I mean? God, it's a wild time. Sorry, for those of you who are newer here, I was a resident at the, uh, the local Gameworks. I was their in-house streamer, and they just have me in a box streaming just throughout the day. People would legit just stand there and just watch me doing my thing. It's great. That's how I got to know Sean. Because um, Sean was working the upstairs bar while I was doing... Oh, hang on. Our tune seemed to have... Our tune seemed to have stopped. All right. Let's keep going with this one, then. There we go. So I got all of Sean's, like, cocktail work during the week. So good. So good. Now I just drink glow in the dark wine. Man, these legs are looking strong. Yeah, getting dragged off while trying to finish Sekiro. 
That's my only regret, was I was so deep in the hole when we were doing Sekiro, I forgot I had the healing item. We could have cleared Sekiro with a fucking crowd. Somehow I'll have to do something to make up for that in the future. But that's another story. Oh, the fucking Mario Kart Grand Prix edition. And um, KDA's pop stars on Beat Saber. The acoustic design place were weird because there was a bunch of stuff y'all couldn't hear that I could every fucking day. Uh, Yahoo! Alright. Look at these big old legs. Look at these legs doing a kick. Look at these legs doing a kick. Oh, wow. Okay, sorry. Uh, check out the detail here. So it twists on the ball joint, right? So it twists on the ball joint, but also the hip can switch. The, the hip can go down. So the hip switches up, but then it also twists on the joint. So in theory, you kind of get this guy being just a little bit taller. Oh, look. I have the big crotch. <laughs> oh no! Ah, oh, look at this. See that? Me and my fucking thumbs. I'll have to come back to this one. It's because the the oil on my hands just from doing fine motor work and getting a bit sweaty. But it's all right. It's main arm, so I can. Uh, do uh, angling stuff. Oh look! More complicated legs! Let's fucking go! <laughs> oh, and the shoes as well. Alright, so we're just... Uh, just as an FYI, friends. So we've nearly finished the legs. The rest of the manual is just the arms, alright? So this is less than half. That is the legs and feet and head, and torso, and this is all the beefcake arms. All arms, all the time. Oh, all arms, and then the katana. Alright, let's keep going. Sorry, Gear Graphic that says, all I heard was twist on the balls and I laughed. Twist his dick! Twist his dick! I am a consummate professional. I'll tell you what though, friends. Let's gather up some of these. I'm gonna do like a little midway clear. Um, okay, so this is your creative check-in. Hello, friends. Um, how are your projects going? Uh, if you cast your eyes into Discord, uh, I would like it. If, and this is a kind request. Uh, if you could pass, uh, if you could post your whips in either Creation Celebration or No Grey November, so I can have a look. Uh, Ragnar's doing the um, perfect grade backpack for their uh, for the Mac Daddy. Um, oh God. And I said this with love and respect, uh, Ragnar, you might be the only person who has a keyboard worse than mine. <laughs> um, but yes, I'd love to see the things that you're working on. Uh, so I'm just going to clear up some of the, the nubs so far, and I'm going to go get a can of water, uh, and then let's keep going. <laughs> Ragnar was like, Oi! It's a painter's workstation! Oh, gear looking good! I will say, the chaplain next to that Eldar does make it look like they're best mates. Like, they kind of look like a buddy cop 40k show that I would watch the shit out of. No, Angel Cleaner, get the food first. <laughs> the leg and twist. The leg and the twist. Alright. Uh, 
Um, once again, this stream is not sponsored by New Type. It fucking should be because I give them money and they don't love me. <laughs> Notice me, senpai. Alright, I'm gonna go grab some water. Um, so yeah, post your whips. Uh, Ragnar, yeah, that's looking good. Sorry for mocking your desktop. <laughs> it's, a, it's a painter station, it's fine. Uh, I'll be back with you all in just a second, so don't go any. Oh, sorry! Uh, I see the inking's going very well. That looks lovely. Okay, this time for realsies. I'll be back in just a second, alright?
Sorry about the wait there, friends. What do you reckon? You reckon this is enough for, for me to go liquid death sponsor me? Liquid death sponsor me! Oh, right. Onward! Leg armor awaits. Uh, I still can't believe... Hang on, where's the camera? I still can't believe you'll talk me into picking this guy up. Uh, well, Lizzie, I did email them about the sponsorship a while back, and I just didn't get anything from them, so... Considering the size of the people they sponsor, it's not a personal insult, you know? It's kind of like with uh, when Empress didn't respond to my messages. It's like, I get it, you're you're trying to cultivate this, uh, this image of being like a classy djinn. You know, you don't want to be associated with, uh, you know... Me. <laughs> uh, Gear Graphic, I'm fundamentally against uh, gamer supplements, and I'd never. It's not something I would personally uh, feel comfortable promoting. Because um, I don't know if you've ever had those like G Fuel supplements and stuff like that. It's basically pre-workout <laughs> that you just drink without doing the workout part. Okay, so we need some E's and some F's. Some D's. D's and nuts. Uh... Uh, Redog, uh, my favourite gin as a straight base for drinks is actually Empress. Like, I I know it's a whole like alcoholist theatre, but I genuinely enjoy the taste. Uh, the gin that I drink the most is New Amsterdam because it's an affordable gin that is unoffensive and mixes really nicely. Yeah, Lizzie, no new type sponsorship, sadly, but again, it is. Uh, wait, so this is E. On E7, this one here. <laughs> G Fuel Longship Grog. <laughs> what about Old Type? Yeah. Old Type don't talk to me anymore, not after the incident. <laughs> Now, Lagmeister, yeah, if you want to talk to me about drinkable supplements, gin is definitely one of them. Uh, have I tried Ungava gin? I don't know. Possibly? Fuck. Ah. Uh. Alright, we need to go back to the F's. The F's and the C's. The F7? Oh, okay, yeah, I see it. Um, <laughs> gin is a supplement for emotions. <laughs> Look. I am not an example that anyone should follow, but uh, if it wasn't for alcohol, I probably wouldn't get any fucking cleaning done around the house in the evenings, let me tell you. Uh, I also need uh, E3. Hey! E3's back. But not for long. Um, but no, sorry. Uh, so, Gig Graphic, like, thank you for suggesting, because, like, I know teams like G Fuel sponsor the absolute hot heck out of um, uh, of like content creators and YouTubers and nonsense merchants. I just I don't know. It's not something that I would advise that you yourself consume. Uh, the last time I had G Fuel was the pre-mix can. Uh, that was the night of the Gin and Sonic. The Sonic the Hedgehog Peach Rings flavor uh, which was then mixed with New Amsterdam Gin. And, whew. Um, and so, Wraith, no, I understand what you're saying. Like, a lot of the, the air quotes, very traditional British gins are very, very heavy on the juniper. 
Um, cu- uh, curic spiced honey liqueur. Oh, oh, that sounds lovely. <laughs> Yo, any alcohol review that ends with "once you've opened this, you won't be able to stop," and we're sorry. Dot dot dot. So sorry. Um, the stuff that uh, Lizzie's recommending uh, is uh, Krupnik, a Polish um, uh, honey, spiced honey liqueur. Woof. Woof. Uh, Lagmeister, I, I have. Um, TikTok worked out way too early on that I'm a very, very big fan of Gillian Anderson. So, uh... I don't know. I don't I don't think I sound like Keanu Reeves when I say woof. Oh, where is C? Oh, C's over here. Oh, and C. C six nine. Oh, there's six. Be aware. Oh, Lagmeister, they knew exactly what they were doing. Before you, you needed such a long life. Uh, significant says that people are always fight shocked when they find out they're like gin because. At Significant's own words, they say that they are a basic bitch when it comes to alcohol. Hey, like, in my personal opinion, gin's the best if you want to go for something citrusy, like be it citrusy tart or citrusy sweet, gin's the best place to start. God. Like, friends, if Long Con ever happens, like, if some bizarre squillionaire just pours stupid money on us, uh, if you're new here, Long Con is our our pipe dream convention it goes down like this uh i pay for your flights and hotels to come to a location probably seattle but it might be you know anywhere in the world depending on like i said this is a multi-million dollar project we pay an events company to handle this shit anyway uh one of the things that i would do is basically a night with bart and ender lol uh but the idea would be is that um, one by one, Sean would create a drink for people. I mean, Wraith, yeah, if we go to Okinawa to the Pineapple Theme Park, then... Ooh, sorry, jumping back, Lizzie was saying that the, um, that honey mead, that's uh, why that honey liqueur works great with, uh, with cola. I can imagine that. Like, it's just got that, that rich kind of... I mean, for me, my brain goes crunchy, but I forget what that's called out here. Uh, like a honeycomb, uh, honeycomb and chocolate kind of thing. <laughs> Ray says that it should be a cruise, but they know I'm going to veto that one. Hey, the ocean has made it very clear what it feels about us these days. I'm just feeling vindication. Uh, the other thing that TikTok keeps showing me is um, cruise horror stories, uh, even though I skipped past them. I think it's secretly because uh, Fiona looks it up, because I know Fiona wants to do a cruise at some point. Okay. Yo, it's significant. It's been ages since I've had to use a sewing machine, but I love it when when the tension is just right and everything comes together in one move and it makes you feel like this, you know, god of the machine. Also the flip side of having to unpick the same fucking stitch seven times because you get it wrong feels less good.
yeah, significant, you got this. But yeah, uh, sorry, jumping back, jumping back. In the eventual uh, ridiculousness of Long Con, uh, what I'll end up doing is, uh, yeah, just booking out one evening where we just give Sean a fully stocked bar with all of his requests, and he gets to take the time to make a drink for everybody. Like, it's not a, it wouldn't be a night about getting riggedy shit-faced. Uh, and for those of you that don't drink, obviously, you know, mock options would be part of it. Because, I mean, it's long con, right? So what I could be able to do is, with the silly budget, is also have a stock of, um, uh, I forget the pro correct term, but they're basically alcohol supplement. No, fuck, what's the correct term? It's non-alcoholic alcohols. So a liquid that tastes like gin, but isn't a spirit. There's a proper term for it. And for those of you that don't drink, it means you can do a lot more of a complex flavor profile. Is it just substitutes? I thought it was a fancy wanky term. <laughs> Lagmeister is asking, where is the jumping back, jumping back t-shirt? You can't, you can't put that onto a t-shirt. I, I use that all day, every day. That is my uh, bringing uh, lovely ADHD people back to the original point at hand go-to phrase. You can't take that away from me. You can have two bells. How about that? Who's <laughs> that? Is that good enough? Hero! How are you doing, friend? What a and welcome! I'm making beefcake arms here. Look at this guy. Yo. Hang on, where's the... Oh, the instructions are here, because I'm literally looking at them. Uh, I'm building this big beefcake. Uh, and it's feckin' cool. I don't know if you've seen this kit before, but the internal skeleton is an action figure. It's so good. Anyway. <laughs> Moose, why do you feel called out? <laughs> what have you done? Yeah, there's quite a few pieces on this where I'll need to go back when doing, um, like, inking and stuff, but... Uh, so Redox says, Aviation and Last Word are the two favorite gins. Um, Last Word with Damagi, uh, and Mazgal. Ho! Oh, fuck yeah! Uh, me and Aviation... I like Aviation, but I think it has a very, very strong flavor. It's very unique. Whereas something like uh, like Empress or um, even Hendrix has more of that kind of that that baseline of we're just doing citrus today. Oh, yeah, no, Moose, that was totally aimed at you. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but. Back of the legs got little jet fins on. This is gloriously ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so Hero, how are you doing? What's been going down? Tell me your tales. Um, like, uh, actually, Hero, you might be interested on this one. We're gonna do another Gundam building contest for the winter. Um, with a big old run up towards it. Uh, we're gonna be doing the Mech Gala. So it's, the goal will be to build like fancy red carpet mechs, uh, but we're trying to come up with like an additional theme because that's what they do at the Met Gala, right? Okay, Asari, congratulations on all the drawing. Have a fucking excellent weekend. And it was lovely chatting and hanging out. Velvet and violence. Not bad, not bad. I know we can do better though. Yeah, initially we were we were bouncing around fashion war crimes as the theme, but the more I say it, the more it's making me feel uncomfortable. And I don't I don't want to feel that.
honestly, in my heart of hearts, I think it might just end up being like red carpet robots. Uh, significant enough, I could still drink mead, I'd get another bottle, but they have hibiscus in, so it's a double allergy. Oh, I'm so sorry. Significant, one of my um, favorite gaffes, um, uh, Mox down in Ballard, uh, I used to love going there because uh, obviously I have a very high uh, alcohol tolerance, right? Um, it's one of the few places where I could walk in and go, uh, please give me, there we go, uh, please give me uh, three measures of mead in a pint glass, and they go, yes. I raised it. Okay, so it's war crimes of fashion. Yeah. The Mech Gala, war crimes of fashion. Fashion war crimes. Yeah. Well, so at Moose, and the thing is, we're going to be aiming for this one for the winter, so that kills the um, the, the Summer of Strikes kind of vibe. Oh, I missed on that. E4! Oh, it's a kaleidoscope, innit? The television network founded on the idea of what if northern people on television. <laughs> Sorry, I should... I shouldn't make jokes that uh, most people uh, would who would get it have gone to bed. Uh, so Hero says they're good. It's day off, been lounging, store's been busy. Just got a ton of graded 10s, Pokemon cards. Woof. Uh, on consignment of this guy who walked in with a freaking lockbox. Fucking yo. Yeah. Honestly, Wraith, I'm thinking red carpet robots is going to be the vibe. So I think we should, I think we just fully embrace the whole, like, ostentatious ridiculousness. Oh. And again, vibes, that sounds feckin' great. Uh, the mead that I miss the most is still the, um, uh, the mead hito. Uh, the mead mosa, surprisingly not as good as the mead hito. Shocking, I know. Just making sure I'm putting this uh, bit of the knee on the right way around. Woo! <laughs> okay. I gotta remember, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Except for with these legs, he should be sprinting. Okay. All right, gear graphic. I'm here with you, friend. Model makers together. Um, but yeah, so Hero, the it'll be a like Gundam. Well, we're allowing any any mech themes. Giant robots are plenty, so it doesn't have to be Gundams. It doesn't have to be Gundam kits. But yeah. So, the Mech Gala, Robots of the Red Carpet. No, Wraith, I really like that idea. Making um, original builds based around the different characters from Metal Gear's Foxhound unit. But I also feel like there's a large proportion of people who might not know that as well. And I don't want to alienate anybody, you know. So I think that'll be one for, for like, the next round. Keep everybody, you know, keep everybody guessing. Uh, where are the Fs at? All right, let's start building this ruddy foot. No, we need A? All right, welcome back, mate. It's been a while. And now my favorite track on this soundtrack. Oh, 
Mech Gala, Code Red Carpet. Yeah, there's a lot of pieces on this that I did not ink proper or missed inking. So I'm definitely gonna have to return to all of this. My name's Sean Bean and I've made Gundams in my spare time. I was in James Bond once. Have a look in a book. This is why I love it whenever Ben comes on the show, because I can make all the Bo Selector references I want, and one other person in existence acknowledges me. God. I wonder if the guy that did Bo Selector looks at, like, Matt Berry and is like, that could have been me. Because we were talking about this over on, uh, actually on Ben's stream. Hunt time. What do you call a hive of investment bankers who I don't know. stab each other? Be traders. <laughs> uh, Akira Zero, how are you doing? Obviously, thank you for 500 bits. Because that's what keeps me alive! Uh, and for the... I wanted to... <laughs> I want to be mad, but I can't stop laughing joke. <laughs> how are you doing? Uh, and Wraith, no, you're right. Like he never, he never had that that level of wit beyond, you know, piss bag and a bird of prey. Oh, oh excuse me. I'm so sorry, friends. Um, but no, we were talking about this over on um, Ben's stream yesterday. After we raided on in, we sorted the dogs. That it's interesting. <sighs> Matt Berry was such an unknown entity in. Uh, like in television and comedy for so long that it's only been in the last like four or five years that he's really been discovered even after doing series like Snuffbox, The Toast of London things like that and the fact they're doing The Toast of Hollywood it's just I love it, I love it it's wild, it shouldn't work but it does um but yeah, like, for so long, Matt Berry was just the guy what had a cameo in uh, the IT crowd, one of Hatsune Miku's best works. Um, I used to repeatedly listen to uh, the Matt Berry nature documentary video on YouTube, accelerating to 40 miles per wolf hour. Oh, sorry, sorry, friends. Let me just put my can of liquid death over here. Liquid death, sponsor me. And Bright Karma, how are you doing? Okay. So Akira Zero says they're currently working to respec their... Now, no Game Jam project has truly failed. Um, but uh, to be asynchronous programming... Interesting. Call me curious. Well, Bright Karma, pour yourself a, a glass of whatever you fancy. Uh, kick off your shoes. I'm going to be uh, here building some dudes. <sighs> Specifically, this beefcake armed mother hubbard. Okay, so I need six and twelve. build these little sneakers. Oh yeah, no, Bright Karma, this person is all beefcake, all arms. Alright. You're gonna be right fiddly, aren't you? Something about Gundam shoes that always look at me and go, I'm going to be a problem. On purpose. 
Uh, here it is, I need some new nippers on payday. Yo, well, I saw a really good price on the Tamiya ones, and so I just bought a couple. So I only swapped over to these ones, I think, for this build or for the previous one. Um, oh God, there's also this brand I keep seeing around that does like a really good affordable variation on like the God Hand style. I keep forgetting about them. I have to look them up in a second. Actually, I got given a pair of God Hand nippers a thousand years ago, and I keep saying I'm going to bust them out for this build, I'm going to bust them out for this build, uh, and then I just fecking don't. <laughs> Because I guess that's what I like. Uh, also, friends, if you haven't seen it, the um, the Leonardo Mech figure has been released. Oh, so hero, not that one, but those one, those are fucking brilliant. I bought their um, their mini vice. Uh, this thing is a fucking godsend. Now, I got this years back now, but yeah, the Despite. Uh, dis I call it Despite, but I might be taking that from an anime pronunciation, so. But yeah, they've been feckin' brilliant. Oh, uh, sorry, so. Um, the Turtles thing, uh, they have released the Leonardo Mech, uh, which. I think the first wave comes with a tiny little um, uh, turtle van put together kit, which I think is feckin' brilliant. Oh, I need four and ten. Uh, so if you like giant robot figures, have stupid money, and don't have the time to put it together, check it out because it looks really feckin' cool. Um, it's four to ten. The other thing that I saw, um, the first trailer for the One Piece show uh, dropped yesterday, and I gotta say, I am I am cautiously optimistic. Oh, that was a bad noise. Aha! I see it! Haha! Like, honestly, it feels like Netflix is determined to master the good anime adaptation. And each time they do something, they get a little bit closer and a little bit closer. No, Fearless, I actually, I do. I mean, now I need them to negotiate good pay for their writers and actors uh, and not use AI bollocks. But, like... I'm genuinely optimistic for this one. Like, Fiona was asking me, like, do they need to... No, he's good. Oh, no, he's not good! I punched his feeties! Okay, we're cool. We're cool. Cool. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. The, the... Why did I turn that off? Uh, the guinea pigs have strong opinions on um, uh, One Piece. But no, Fiona was asking, like, do they need to have watched um, One Piece to get into it? And I was advising, like, nah, just... Because if the Netflix show is bad... Like, the only thing you've lost is a little bit of time. But if it's good, it'll be a great, like, starting point. I love that the there's such a, a fresh and diverse cast. That the ridiculousness is being embraced. Well, so, I was talking... I mean, again, I was talking about this with Fiona last night. And so looking back, like, Cowboy Bebop was so close so close like at each time they do an adaptation the chunk of it which is good gets better so let's start with the adaptation of uh death note which was mostly fucking garbage but willem dafoe as ryuk perfect perfect uh my friend liked to point uh, my friend liked to think about the idea of if you think of the netflix um, Death Note as a prequel to 
the, the proper one. That's not bad. Um, uh, Wraith, there was a live action Death Note, um, which was... Oh, come on, again? Drop the same piece three times now. Hang on, let me get the, the lighting right. Oh. Beware the chin. <laughs> Sorry. Starting to unravel at this point. Um, yes, uh, there were two movies. Uh, I think they got... Was it, I think it was the lad from... Uh, I want to say... Um, Battle Royale to play the lead, I want to say. Get your feeties in there. God. What is wrong with your fucking flippers here, mate? God, he's got toes that wiggle. I'm not comfortable with this. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, the, the Japanese live-action Death Notes kind of suffer a similar problem as the, the series overall, that they don't really know what to do with it once... <sighs> once the main arc concludes, they don't really know what to do with it. I mean, hell, even the manga kind of suffered from that as well. Um, but yeah, so, jumping back, jumping back. I felt that the Netflix adaptation of Death Note got a couple of sweeping bits right. The adaptation of Cowboy Bebop got certain parts of it perfect. And then the side story with Vicious and Julia was so atrocious as to detract from the main. So with this one, it's like, which bits are they going to get right? So yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic, you know? This tune absolutely does not fit the mech building, but I'm just going to let it keep going. Alright, so that's the toes. Okay, so A, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, I'll bring this up because I can't see... I don't see diddly squat here. Uh, Dustin says they now have seven of ten perfect stamps. I'm sorry, but the phrase I'm feeling some tension here is not in Monkey D. Luffy's vocabulary. Oh, sorry, uh, numbers. Thank you, Coiny, for the bits. I, I'm, I'm just saying that I'm willing to give it a proper run at it. In isolation, that line does not fit the character, but I got hope. But seriously, thank you for the bits, friend. Okay, so I needed to get uh, one, two, and three. I don't know. Maybe I just want to hope after the new Trigun was so, so bad and broke my little heart. Maybe I just want to love again, you know? I want to know what love is! Uh, it's so wild because, like, the character designs for new Trigun were so good and the show was so fucking bad. And it's just that wild thing of like seeing a, a sea of brand new uh, cosplayers and people getting into it and being like, oh, they're going to love Trigon! And then... Uh, look, if new Trigon ends up being a vector for which new people can get into it, and that maybe it'll get the, um, 
the the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood treatment, uh, as in like a proper manga adaptation of Trigon and Trigon Maximum. That would be lovely, but. And there was one episode of um, New Trigun that was very good about uh, like baby Wolfwood growing up in a in an orphanage. That was like okay, this makes sense. Um, but then you find out that um, Wolfwood's actually been chemically aged, so he's probably only about like maybe ten or eleven years old. Yeah, yeah. So when when Wolfwood D Biggest Dickus helped the uh, the Time War, yeah, that's a that's a child in a grown up body. I don't know, Fearless. I don't know. They saw something beautiful and they wanted to destroy it. And me. This track feels like going insane in the Katamari world. The fact that, okay, the fact that this has a wiggleable toe. Hang on, let me move the lighting so you can see it better. Like, it's big toe wiggles. That is some Quentin Tarantino shit right there, if you know what I'm saying. I, for one, I'm not okay with it. So Raid said, if I wanted to get into Full Metal Alchemist, would it be a good to go straight to Brotherhood? Um... So I did the original TV show, then the manga, then Brotherhood. Oh god, I said manga instead of manga. Ah, ah, bad mouth feel. Bad mouth feel! Uh, that's how I went through it. I recommend watching the, the, card, the, the very, very first anime version first. Because there's parts of it that are so wonderfully in depth, uh, and there are other parts of it. Obviously, oh, you you all know the story. Uh, it was commissioned when uh, Full Metal Alchemist was still in production. The the series was keeping pace with the manga as it was coming out, and then the show caught up to the manga, and so they designed their own kind of like offshoot and ending. Um, and weirdly, uh, Gintama does a great breakdown um, about why that happens in shows. It's kind of fascinating. Uh, also, watch Gintama. <laughs> Just watch Gintama. It's so funny. Um, man, this guy's kicks are starting to look real good, though. Some good feedies. So yeah. Uh, so Boo, um, Full Metal Alchemist, uh, the TLDR, uh, two boys whose uh, mother dies of uh, questionable sickness, uh, try and use magic alchemy to bring her back from the dead. The one thing you're not allowed to do, uh, the one thing you're not allowed to use alchemy for. Go. Uh, or unless you mean uh, a Gintama. Uh, Gintama is a comedy show about. Uh, an ex-samurai turned odd jobsman and his little found family. Um, it's basically, what if the Boshin Rebellion slash Meijin Restoration, but instead of Westerners, it was aliens from outer space. Uh, Gin fought on the side of the traditionalists, and they lost. So he now lives in Tokyo, which is full of like aliens and a high-tech kit but also samurai and all sorts. <laughs> uh, ah, Wraith. There's actually um, uh, one of my favorite parts of Full Metal Alchemist is how it teaches you about animals, like how dog go woof, cat go meow, Oh, 
Oh god, these feet are complicated. I haven't even finished one foot yet! Let's do a little round game. Let's do a little everybody game. Okay. Oh. One of these days I'm going to buy the FMA yeah. dance t-shirt. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, I don't know if you saw numbers, but somebody did a keychain pendant where you can spin it and it's the fusion and then the combination. And uh, numbers, thank you again for this, friend. Uh, and Orion Pirate, the, the Gintama live action films are really really good if you're already a fan uh, the Kenshin live action films are great if you've not seen if you've not seen the originals um, and the less we say about the original creator the better I'm amazed Hatsune Miku can do as much work as they do Okay, so, we're all going to play a game. You get to pick one. One animu that you would recommend that everybody see. Just one animu. And I want you to try and think as far out of the usual sphere as possible. Um, so, for example, there's loads I could say. I could say Odd Taxi. Uh, I could say, as I said, Gintama. But... If I had to put one down and be like, right, I'd love you all to watch this one animu. It is called The Tower of Druga. It's on Crunchyroll. Um, and it's fucking so good. Okay, so Ragnar, War in the Pocket is fucking incredible. <laughs> but what would be a... Uh, what would be a non-Gundam one that you recommend? And Hiro, uh, Junji Ito's work is amazing, but as, I mean, at last that I fucking saw, like, there hasn't been a good anime adaptation, right? Oh, numbers, yeah, Digimon Tamers, feckin' brilliant, but, much like I challenge Ragnar to not Gundam, numbers, what would be yours that is not Digimon? Uh, so, Boo, I think Netflix is paying for the next anime adaptation of uh, Uzumaki. Because there's one live-action version which no one talks about. And then there was the, the Jinji Ito collection which got panned. <laughs> Alright, Dustin, that is the best pitch I've heard in a while. Um... Uh, Pie Brain Puzzle of God. The pitch is, what if Mensa operated on Yu-Gi-Oh! logic? I love it. Ooh! See, numbers. I don't know that one. So I am putting that in my fucking list. Okay. Two seasons. 2002, uh, 2020. Okay. Thank you for that, numbers. Uh, Ragnar was saying, uh, do you mean Eden of the East? Uh, Rhea Dog, Outlaw Star, classic. Love it. Uh, Air Dragon saying the one they'd love to have more people see is a show called Flame of Rika or Rekka? Tell me about that one. Huh. Numbers, that sounds just genuinely wholesome. And you know what's significant? I often forget that those of us that came up through like the VHS DVD era, like second wave anime, that there's so much that we assume is widely known, like Slayers, or Gunsmith Cats. Um, and then you mention them in squads and people are like, eh? Samurai Pizza Cats. Though I would say Samurai Pizza Cats is technically first wave. Technically. And that's only the waves in uh, perspective of English language territories. 
not how Animu has been produced in Japan, obviously. Dari, Watto, and welcome. We're talking about Animu. <laughs> Sorry, um, Bright Karma throwing some good ones in. Um, that, you know, Battle Royale, Rose Maiden for looks. Madoka Magica. So, I fell asleep during the first episode of Madoka Magica repeatedly. So, for ages, I had no idea what the hook was because everyone was like, You gotta watch this show. You gotta watch this show. And I'm like, Yes. And so I put it on, and that whole soft Moe vibe of like the first episode, I'm just like, Oh, oh, I have a little sleepy sleep. I had no fucking clue. Uh, and Ket, how are you doing, friend? Watto and welcome! Do you like board games? What if someone made board games for you and with you? Well, look no further than my good friend, Ket! Uh, actually, I my keyboard's covered. Can someone do exclamation Ket for me? Uh, friends, so Slifter in chat is a very, 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 very good friend of mine. And they are currently doing a project over on Patreon where they create bespoke board games as like a group project. And it's really cool. We spent a whole Saturday making a cult themed. <laughs> More like Madoka Tragica than a night. <laughs> a Madoka Tragica. I like that. Thank you, Phyllis. <laughs> Was that a firework? Hey, it's okay, River. It's okay. River, it's okay. You're okay. Was that a dickhead with a firework? Yes, it's oh. a firework. It's not even... Oh. Why are people the worst? It's okay. I just put the uh, clean laundry in the tub. Um, if you want, I can just let her sit under my feeties. I'm gonna try to put the mattress in here. Okay. Very loud. So numbers, I'm trying to remember if I've... Is school days on Crunchyroll? Because I'm sure you and I have had this conversation before. And... If I haven't... Like, if you've recommended it and I haven't seen it yet... Okay, so I need C7, C8, that's these two here, and then, alright, I'm going to clean these up anyway. Yeah, um... Because here's the thing, it's like, I'm not, I don't watch as much anime these days as I used to. You know, I'm watching uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, um, which... Uh, if we need to move Calcium Bonio, we move Calcium Bonio. Uh, sorry about this, friends. Uh, I don't know if you heard over the mic, but some dingus just let off some fireworks nearby. River hates fireworks. So we're just trying to get her like a little place to, to chill. Um, oh, it is on Crunchyroll. Cool. I can have a look at it. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I'm just watching Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, Ranking of Kings... Um, and having a bloody good time doing it. Oh. Hey, Amos, out of here. You know, you see that oh. plate. No. No. What? Sorry about that. Where were we? Uh, anyway. River, come here. Not yet. No. Oh, sorry. Blankies. Oh, it doesn't need, it needs to blankies. Master Chief, would you mind telling me what you're doing in that Snuggie? Go in blankie mode, sir. <laughs> TikTok has rotted my brain. And I'm okay with it. River. River, come here. River. Hey. River, come here. Good big girl, see? 
whole blankie to hang out on. I got you. No, no, go on, go on, it's okay. Here, go lay down. Go on. Go on, come on. Come on, lay down. No, no, not under there. Go big go. River, no, 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 river, no. All right, uh, friends, please bear with us. Um, technical problems and animals. We'll be back with you all in just a second. Thank you all for waiting. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, what I can do is I can offset the uh, the chaos with a little bit of Oreos. 
Uh, Fiona picked up some of the uh, the Mario Oreos, Mario Oreos from uh, from Freddy's, and checked it out. Uh, it's a fucking me, Mario, and do 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 do. And Adrian Galina. River is fine. The river is fine. Uh, it was only one firework that people let off, and it kind of spooked her. And we were trying to make her a little nest in here, and then she peed everywhere. So it was like, oh, no. But she's okay. Oh, okay. So back to Animu. Ow. <laughs> Nothing can defeat me! Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, significant. I'm sorry. You got this. I believe in you. Uh, Boo says, do you remember the first animu you saw? So... I remember the first second wave that I saw. I may have seen something like Samurai Pizza Cats or... Robotech. Like, before... But... When I was doing a little, like, stint at Lionhead Games a thousand, thousand years ago, <laughs> thank you, Gear Graphic, uh, there was a gentleman there who was an artist on the team who, I mean, I, I've told you about this before, but, like, he was everything that Tiny Will wanted to be. Like, dude drew Street Fighter characters for fun on his lunch break. You know, he did kung fu. He had a girlfriend. He played video games. He drank. Like, Wow. I still remember playing uh, Advance Wars at the pub with him. Which I can call it. So he was like, oh, so are you an anime fan? And I was like, what? I was like, oh, shit. All right. And he was like, right, go home. I'm going to order two things when you get back. I'm going to buy two VHS. I'm going to get Akira. And I'm going to get Ghost in the Shell. I'm not telling you anything. And obviously, because like I looked up to this guy, I just went home and did it. And... I initially started watching Ghost in the Shell first, because I got both VHS at the same time. But the opening with Makoto doing the whole, like, naked stealth boobies out, um, you know, I was living with my family, so I ejected that <laughs> as fast as possible, waited until uh, nightfall, and then watched Akira first, then Ghost in the Shell. Because I think those of us who grew up mask, especially in nerdery, we all had somebody like that. Oh, numbers. Absolutely the fuck not. I just waited until everybody had gone to bed. Uh, Air Dragon says, Vampire Hunter D is the oldest one they remember seeing. It's so beautiful. Like, Hunter D and Bloodlust. Is it Bloodlust, the, the follow-up? They barely make a lick of sense, and they're so beautiful. Oren said, do imported uh, adaptations count? Do you mean, like, ones that were unofficially dubbed? Or are we talking about things like... Peter Katz and... <laughs> Gear Graphic, I was actually thinking exactly the same thing, but I was like, I'm not going to bring it up. I'm not going to bring it up. But yeah. Fuck them and their whole, like, anyone can make anime. No. Anyone can steal somebody else's work via an algorithm. Bastards. 
you know what? Pokemon, considering the timelines, is definitely something I would consider like a... Probably closer to a first wave. Oh, sorry. And this is not... I don't know if this is how anybody else talks about anime, but I class anime kind of in three waves. So wave one is more for people kind of like older than myself. I was watching what they could... Um, uh, or only had exposure to things like, you know, Robotech and other like uh, anime reworkings, things like um, Speed Racer and stuff like that. Second wave is the VHS, the DVD era where anime became like a super specialty thing. Uh, where, you know, you would order it from special publishers online and the anime fandom as it's become known started to, to take root and then um, third wave or current is like mainstream streaming services becoming available like anime is now widely available as a as a space and I like that um, I'd say yeah I, I think it's safe to call Dragon Ball first wave but Funimation were also in the same business as Manga Entertainment so like they were definitely a big part of the second wave as well God, it's wild to think how expensive anime used to be like a single DVD with four episodes used to be 20 quid or whatever the equivalent was out here like in dollary dues and that still it blows my tiny mind you know, I spend six bucks a month for Crunchyroll. That was one of my first um, uh, decadent purchases when uh, the long ship got up and running. Because, you know, I was living on Ket's sofa, so all I did was kind of stay up watching Animu and uh, being uh, making sad boy noises in the living room. Uh, Orion says that their spell still has an anime, drugs would be cheaper shirt. Feckin' hell. Okay. Oh god, there's so many tiny things to clip onto this. Alright, so I got my Fs. Where my E is at? Uh, where is he? E's over here! Hey! God, that joke was terrible and I feel bad. Now, yeah, so Wraith, that shirt still works with Warhammer even now. Okay, so from F, I need 9 and 11. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. 9. 9 and 11. Dari says that their favorite anime, a place further than the universe, is currently only available for a set of four Blu rays at 70 bucks a pop. <laughs> oh man. I'm, I mean, Dari, I'm so. <coughs> Yo ho! <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you're gonna pay all that, but you know that's just that's just how it be. Yo, <clears throat> yo, -ho. that's just how it it be sometimes. Like I've absolutely never watched my favorite um, dub of one of my favorite films on the anime archive, uh, the anime archives, on the internet archives, because that's the only place where it still exists. I've I've never done that. I've never done that. Never ever. No, it's... Okay, I promise I'm not just going to rehash the same conversation topics that we have all the time. It's just, sometimes you fall in love with a certain cast, and for you, that's the canonical cast, even if it is a dub cast. And for me, I... watch videos on it. There are a lot of people out there who think the same thing that I do, which is, for Pat Label 1 and 2, that the manga entertainment English cast did a better job than the Japanese cast. 
Oh yeah, numbers, and I, th I think that's definitely worth it. I mean, I think you got to ask yourself, like, come the Zombocalypse, what would you happily watch, like, night in, night out, during an internetless winter? And that's the stuff you should focus on. Uh... Sujetsu Kanbari. Hang on, let me give that a quick search, because... Let me tell you, being a dyslexic kid and getting into Animu is the fucking worst. Oh, yeah. Um, Kanbari the Iron Fortress. Yeah. That's fucking great. Uh, unfortunately, the dub for that one is not. And, like, I need to get better about watching um, more undubbed stuff outside of my weekly rotation because now Witch of Mercury's finished you know that can't that can't be my only was the... that can't be my only uh, uh, animu each week you know Orion Pirate, some of the subtitling I've seen, especially of the more recent stuff, is sometimes such utter garbage. It's really infuriating. Um, like, Amazon's definitely one of the worst when it comes to, to subtitling. Um, like, the amount of times that fucking, uh, The Expanse and, uh, like, Made an Abyss, where the subtitles would just be wrong. Or broken. Okay, and Dari, yeah, no, I've, I've heard, but I hadn't seen it yet. Got to make sure these shoes have their little jet fins on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Lagmeister, there is that. Um, someone suggested um, printing out a Shakespearean-esque script of, uh, of all of Critical Role. Like, in the event that uh, the world collapses, uh, that that could be our uh, our new form of theatre, is uh, re-performing the adventures of Sir Matthew Mercer and his band of merrymen. Not merry men, merrymen. And that amuses me greatly. Uh, also, like, hopefully everybody, you know, striking at the moment gets everything they're after, but in the event that they don't, Maybe we'll all finally have time to catch up on One Piece. <laughs> God, I was I was up to date with the manga until the Spooky Island arc and real life came a knocking. And by the time I kind of returned to it, everything was strange and weird. That Simpsons quote. I used to be with it, and then what it was changed. Now everything is strange and weird. That was me with One Piece. Alright, so where the fuck are you going? Oh, okay. You've got your own little, like, anklet thing going on. Alright, mate. It's always a little bit weird when the, uh, <laughs> when the mech designer clearly has a thing for shoes. Is there still a nubbin on the front there? No. God, that would be stupid. Imagine if I'd forgotten to clip off a nubbin again. Imagine. Uh... Oh, piss and... Fucking piss! Oh, fuck sticks. 
anklet is not sturdy. Did I miss a piece? I don't think so. Alright. Well, so Air Dragon, I know what you mean. Um, I know what you mean. Actually, so Moose, someone was saying is that minute for minute, um, you could watch One Piece twice in the time it would take you to finish Critical Role. And I love that. Uh, okay, so E13. Why are these so intricate? Oh. Disconnected. Oh, that disconnected sound wasn't actually from the uh, the track. That was just my brain for a second there. It's weird. Since getting into um, Gundam building, the amount of time that I've had to watch um, like dubbed anime, uh, sorry, um, just subtitled anime has decreased significantly because I can't do this and watch something at the same time because I can't, if I'm, if I'm getting all fiddly up in the, the business, I'm going to absolutely miss like plot details and stuff like that. So I've been revisiting a lot of shows that I wouldn't have watched otherwise. So that if the if the English cast is really, really good, then I can get into it. And I can still enjoy those Sakuga moments. And if it's bad, then I haven't really lost anything. Um, that was definitely Fire Force. Which... Fire Force sure is a show that exists. It lacks that fucking edge that Soul Eater had. Uh, I know the Animu didn't get the same kind of like... There we go. Woo! I think that's one, that's one foot done. Yeah, look, one foot for kicking. Hop-a-cha, hop-a-cha, hop-a-cha! Look at that. Look at that booty. Woo! Woo! Toes that wiggle. <laughs> Boy, they sure do know what their audience is like. <laughs> oh, Lagmeister. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, keep your hands off of Etiken. I think anybody that works in any creative field should watch that. Like... Video games, literature, like, anime, comics, manga, television, what have you. It should be, like, an essential one. Yeah, Dustin, one foot done, two bells! Ding, ding. Okay, next VDs. I'm very grateful that you all don't mind like hanging out and chatting and watching this because I, I love doing this. I guess though that whenever we're doing these Gundam building days, it does just turn into kind of like an extended talk show, which I'm, I'm entirely fine with, as long as you all are, you know. So I was joking earlier about you lot being like the sponsors of the long ship, but it's kind of true, you know. There's a reason that we're not a 24-7 Devil Daggers channel. <laughs> <laughs> Wraithwind, so glad you dipped your toe into this whole Gundam building thing. Yo, blame Jarolan. Blame Jarolan. Well, okay, blame Jarolan, and then blame all the mysterious, uncredited benefactors who were like, what if we just kept giving Will Gundams? 
And here we are. I just hope I can, like, impress the peeps over at, like, Bandai Namco or something and have them be like, yo, this Will guy sure is someone we should throw Gundams at because he's fucking cool. <laughs> there we go, Dustin, that's my lounge band. Will Overguard and the mysterious uncredited benefactors. Thing is, every time I hang out with Longshipian Peeps IRL, I keep expecting one of them to be like, Hey, did you uh, enjoy that Gundam? Wink! It's not happened yet. So either there's someone who just lurks and is happy being like a Shadow Kingmaker. Or Gundam Kingmaker. Uh, or, I don't know, there's there's an even bigger setup on the way, you know? Alright. So I need three and seven. Uh, Gear says I'll randomly donate a Gundam or a Talmec because I'm feeling lucky. Nah, a Talmec would be wasted on me. Those models are so beautiful, and they really need someone who's got that that fine motor skill painting. Uh, that thing where you say the numbers out loud and then immediately forget them. Sorry, I've got to clean up my uh, my drunken work from earlier. Oh, it's got a little face on it. Me, anytime a Gundam has anything resembling a face on a part. Look, it's got a little face. Look at me. I'm a tiny part of a foot, but I'm going to make friends with you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Ah! Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, boo. I, I fucking love Gandams. Uh, Zaku's a feckin' rad. But I think at the moment I've got... One, two... No. So technically I have five Zakus on the dock here. Um, and Wraith, thank you for saying the kind things. Uh, I didn't want to sound like I'm just like all about plugging, you know, talking about how wonderful I am, but like, Wraith, that's really kind of you to say, and it is absolutely something that I wanted to cultivate with Memnol, because I can only talk about it from this perspective, right? As someone who streams professionally, I don't want to have to talk to you less. And a lot of tabletop RPGs mean, basically, I have to spend... Ah! No, we're good, we're good. Uh, I have to spend several hours not talking to any of you. And that's not... That's not fun for me. That's... That's... It's... That's the opposite of fun. That's not fun. Oh, I put the wrong C away. Lol. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, the okay, if you're new here, so Memory Equals Null was a project that started a thousand years ago, and the premise was very simple. I got hella drunk and kept telling Baron Sheep that I love tabletop RPGs. I love them. Love playing them, love talking about them, but 
What I don't like about tabletop RPGs is how the audience is so disconnected from the person streaming. And one of the best things about streaming is being able to hang out and talk with you all. So Baron cooked up this um, this system that allowed for me and all of you lot to control one character. Um, with the idea that this character would have uh, amnesia going into the, the project. So... Um, so we would all have to work out the character we're playing via play. And I could talk to you lot and ask questions and all of that. Yeah, teeny tiny thick McRun fast. And... But it, like, like great tabletop RPGs, it was a dumb name that by the end of it, like... And I remember it being either Moose or... Oh, I forget who named Thick. It's a... Obviously, it's a bit from Mystery Science Theater 3000. Thick McGrunfast. Thud McPunchhard. And it just stuck. Anyway... I really, really enjoyed it. Um, before life got on top of me and things got very, very complicated, we were doing a uh, a D&D 5th edition campaign in a similar vein. The story of Emberlyn Burns, Herald of the Queen of Embers. Um, right now I need to sit down and work out what does, what does tabletop on the longship look like moving forward. Uh, I have to have a lot of conversations with a lot of people. Um, like, is there going to be a return to Oak Hollow? Um, do we want to do, not necessarily a Balu Bowl, because it's been so long since we played Stars Without Number, but do we want to do something similar, you know? Do people want to sign up to run the, uh, the infinitely changing dungeon of fuckery? You know? Which would essentially be like live-action Nightmare. Sorry, and we got this little. He's got like a little, a little hangout now. And that goes in the back of his calf. Yeah, you can see I haven't done this side, but I have. So, off stream at some point, what I'll do is I'll go over this and see all the little bits of uh, of inking that I missed. Also, in my uh, excitement earlier, I put the wrong bits on the wrong bits. So, go me. Wrong bits on the wrong leg. Um... Oh, Air Dragon, get loads of sleep. Uh, thank you for the, uh, the wonderful banter and conversation. And uh, if there isn't a surprise stream over the weekend, I will see you on Tuesday. Uh, I'd almost forgotten about having to do a bathtub stream, so I don't know when that's going to happen. Probably Monday. <laughs> I see it! So that's the thing I've got to do. <laughs> Never been afraid of baths. I love I love taking a bath. Just uh <sighs> Okay, there we go. All right, that looks much better. So what happened was basically I accidentally did the wrong foot. Uh, well, sorry, I accidentally put some of the wrong pieces on the wrong thigh. So this is where these feedy mistakes keep happening. Anyway, let's give this creepo some toes. Um, 
Shit, where were we? We're talking about Memno. We were talking about TTRPGs. Um, we were talking about Animu. It's weird being a giant robot fan. Because you want to support giant robot media. But not all of it is great. We did talk about Zaku's Boo. And uh, some of my future Zaku's. Uh, Wraith, they're doing good. They're doing good. Um, haven't hung out with them. Uh, nearly as much as I would like, but but yeah. Yeah, bacon. It's one of the things I try and do because we do meet new people here, and they don't know. Sorry, bacon was saying that. When I talk about things like Memnull and prefix it with uh, if you're new here, reminds me of how long we've been hanging out. Yeah, I mean, the longship's been going over five years. Like, we outlasted <laughs> Gundam Evolution, Artifact, Stadia, uh, Anthem. Like, we've got fucking tenure, friends. But I also, I try and make it so that, like, if someone's only started hanging out with us in the last, like, couple months, that they don't feel like... I don't know, they don't feel excluded. You know? At least that's my goal. Oh, uh, E4. And I think that's a hard thing to do, because, like, streams... I mean, I guess like a lot of a lot of things, streams change and evolve and morph, you know. With ours, like we've gone through so many cycles, you know. The cycle where I was just streaming on Ket's rig during the day. Um, the GameWorks arc. You know, we've gone through, what, like, three iterations of Longship HQ since, you know, Fiona and I got together. Um... No, and, you know what, Wraith, it's... It was topical, it was on point, and I like talking about it. I miss it, you know? And it's always hard when you're working on something creative and the fault is you. I can't blame anyone else for the stalling of Memnal Season 2. That's on me. And, you know, you've all seen me when I've been having a, a bit of a wibble, a bit of a bad day. I feel like... I don't know. Over the years, there's a lot of people I've let down, and I feel bad about that. And sometimes when the brain spiders come and chop in, it's, it's not good. But then I hear from people and I realise that it's mostly all taking part inside my own head, so... And I'm sure none of you can relate to that! <laughs> and... And Hunter, I think there's kind of... there's levels as well, you know? And that's okay. You know, for a lot of us, myself included, like the longship is where I live. Like, it's not just my job; it's my it's my digital home. But if all you do is kind of hang out on streams on the intermediary, that's fucking great. Because, you know, my job here is to accompany you all as your your second screen, your live action, not a podcast. <laughs> keep company, provide conversation, insight into them Vigia games that people keep talking about. Uh, I hear they make them in the third dimension now. <laughs> Hello, Amos. Okay, so we need to do the old one, two, three with the A's. Rack up these nubbins like a line. Amos, you'll find me.
Oh yeah, no, bacon. It's been so wild. And I think I told you this, but um, yeah. So I'm doing the Make a Game in an Hour panel, and uh, guess who's sharing the same time slot? The old bastards. So that's... Whip. Okay, the remix that none of us asked for, but all right. <laughs> I mean, Bright Karma, do you mean maybe they'll forgive me stealing all of the good audience? Because we're actually going to have fun. Nah. They can gobble farts with a spoon for all I care. Uh, eight. There we go. Uh, I want... One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two
Uh, for those who don't know, like Dan Emmons is an incredibly established designer in video games. Dude knows his shit. He's also incredibly funny, which is great. Um, I was brought on board to restart everything, and my goal was to kind of emulate what Loading Ready Run were doing, because we had lots of different personalities who did lots of different things, and for a time it was going well. Uh, I had no idea how bad things were behind the scenes when I came in. Um, and those aren't my stories to tell. Um, but it got me moved out to Seattle. It got me, you know, meeting a lot of you lot. And... I don't know. I don't want to give anybody a pass. I don't want to do that thing where people say like, oh, well, you know, it was bad, but, you know, it turned out good in the end. No. I survived in spite of those fuckos. But I look at where I am now. You know, I have a lovely little flat. Dogs might drive me up the wall, but I love them dearly. You know, I go to sleep with a doggo on me most nights. I think that's a pretty fucking great way to live. I spend my days talking with you lot. And yeah, I'd like to be able to do a little bit more, and I'd like to be able to, to reach out to more people, but... Yeah, and know what you Yeah, I got out. You know? If I'm being perfectly honest, if it hadn't been for, like, Ket and you lot and peeps like that, I wouldn't have kept doing this, especially not as myself. Because, I mean, here's the thing. I'm not special. I know how to weave a story, I've streamed a lot, but I'm just a guy. You know, I didn't make Doom, I didn't fucking craft Psychonauts. I'm just, I know. I know a lot of play, I know a lot of things, and I've been in a lot of conversations, but... But yeah. It still blows my tiny mind that you lot want to keep me around, and I try not to think about it too, too hard, because otherwise it makes my brain go, what? But yeah. Every now and then when we're streaming, I get this kind of like this, this feeling. If you've seen me do like the long thousand yard stare, and it's because, what are we doing right now? I'm building a Gundam, talking to you lot about anime. We're planning a Met Gala mech build contest, which is going to be fucking brilliant. Um, like, and this is what I do with my days. It's the best. We're having fun, and that's going to be something... That, like, we're having fun, and that's the means by which I can feed my tiny little family. Like, fucking yo! Yeah, Wraith, that's a good way of putting it. So look, you know, I'm not closing up the stream or anything, but just, if I haven't told you all anytime soon, anytime recently, sorry, I'm very, very, very fucking lucky to have you all here. I'm extremely grateful to have you all here. And, like, thank you for keeping me around. Does that make sense? So yeah, that's what's important. Uh, on the subject of Floydo, uh, what's Floydo's voice like in real life? Fucking excellent. That's and the thing is, Floydo doesn't have like a radio voice. That's just him the whole time. Uh, he is one of the most chronically busy gentlemen that I've had the pleasure of knowing. Uh, I'm trying to organise like digi drinks with him because like I uh, I haven't been able to to pop up to Vancouver. Um, and I desperately, desperately want to finish Happen Lance. I don't know why, but that game got its hooks into me. Oh god, yeah, actually, that reminds me. I need to DM uh, Emmons back. God. Like, I am a difficult friend to have in the real, by the way. <laughs> Just in case that wasn't obvious. 
Um, also, one of the things that's been really great about the longship is proving that you can put a squad of people together based on kindness and empathy and building cool shit together. And it doesn't have to be based on a product or a game or a thing, you know? That always makes me happy. Alright, next robot's getting toes. Quentin Tarantino noises intensify. I love how every... Every three or four years, a new group of film students will discover the fact that Quentin Tarantino has a... has the most documented foot fetish in all of Hollywood. And they'll be like, oh my god, did you know this? And everyone will be like, yes, we've known this. We've known this since Pulp Fiction. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, Angel Cleaner said it as well, but yeah, can confirm the Floyds are fucking lovely. Like, they are, they are absolutely lovely. Also, Bacon, I am sorry. Every time I get to do a video for Playframe, which is always the fucking best, I always say to myself before, I'm like, right, Will, we're not gonna swear. Playframe don't swear. And then it's boop, 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 boop. Uh, I'm going to retell this for some of the newer people, but I know the old school have heard this story. So back when I was still like doing stuff with, when EC was still an entity and I was doing stuff with them, uh, I did the, the playthrough of So You're Being Hunted. Uh, I was based out of um, New Zealand, I had a lot of time in my hands, um, I volunteered it and Soraya was like... Um, and I put that series together. I really enjoyed doing it, and it turned out like people really liked it. Yeah, Beerless was saying that playthrough is how they found my dumb ass, and Dustin. I'm like, fuck yeah. It was great. Um, I, much like I do professionally now, I, I half told about eight stories and finished none of them. Um, so I'm at a PAX, right? And we all used to take turns manning the, the, the booth in Bandland. Um, this is how I got to know, like, uh, Echo proper and Lil and peeps like that. It's real cool. So, I'm manning the stand and this person comes up and is like, Oh, hey, like, is this the, the EC stand? I'm like, yeah. Um, and, because I'm not a big deal. So I was just kind of like, you know, sadly, the Dans aren't here at the moment. But, you know, they're going to be back later. And so if you want to swing by, they're like, no, no, we wanted to, you know, say thank you for your so you're being uh, hunted place. I was like, oh, thank you. And they were like, yeah, my little one really enjoyed it. And I was like, oh, that's so lovely of you to say. And then without skipping a beat, this person's like, I had to have a talk with my little one about uh, the swear. We had to have the swear words conversation with my child. And I was like, I'm so sorry. You know that thing that Fuzzy Bear does when he kind of crumples in on himself when he's done something wrong? I did that. I went full Muppet, but as a person with bones. <laughs> I think about that a lot. I will say, while I tried to not swear when we first started doing uh, Long Shippian nonsense, that didn't last. I don't swear as much as I used to. Because let me tell you, going from living in the UK to living in uh, New Zealand, my C-bombs per minute was very high. And yeah, Fearless, that was the Raygun Lounge, right? Hunter's like, where are we pride, Will? You're swearing taught a child an important life lesson. <laughs> yeah, Wraith, we got tenure. I always like it when Hindle comes by, because Hindle didn't know me from EC. Hindle knew me from Total War. But from an event we did at the um, uh, the Royal Armory. So it was made me feel good. Bright says, Sega bass fishing is a chill good time. Fuck yeah. Until you're trying to go for a record catching fish. Then it's a stressful time. Oh. I, I mean, Angel Cleveland, that sounds great. 
Um, one of the best ones that we did as, a, as an event back then, um, uh, another one of like Saray's incredible creations was um, we went to a detective escape room type event. That was really fucking good. No, I did feel very guilty to people who got stuck with me. And the idea was like one one person from our side was oh hello. It's so pretty! Do you wanna do you wanna show him the camera? No, you can look look at the HD cam here. Ooh. Oh and then you've got my scuffed up leftovers. Yeah, I need to do my nails. Maybe I'll do that tonight. There's something like I thought I'd do it as soon as I could do my, my bad hand. Uh, Fearless says, ooh. Gear Graphics says, yes, and Square says, shiny. That's shiny because the Swifties are in town. It's, uh, it's I in... Just, I'm trying to blend in. Ah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Swifties refers to Taylor Swift fans. And they have their own, like, gravitational pull, but instead of gravity, it's glitter. Like, as they come closer and closer together, they create ambient shininess. It's science. Uh, Hunter, I do still have the tiny spotlight handy. Alright, pop your... Oh. Alright, I'm gonna pop your hand under there. And then, look at this. Wow. Yeah, look at that shiny goodness. Yeah, you get the detail. Uh, Dustin says, For someone who knows feck all about painting nails, cared off for a crash course. Uh, me or Fiona? This uh, is just, this isn't even like nail stuff, it's just press on, like, like those press on polish things. Which is really nice. Um, well, the Will secret, um, well, okay, it's not my secret secret, but. So just the basic black nails. Uh, there we go. Any kind of, like, any kind of base coat's fine. Don't worry about this one. You want to splash out and get good top coat. Don't worry about keeping inside the lines, because everything that's not on the nail, you can pick away afterwards. Once it's dried, you can just like... Uh, or get like a, a toothpick or something and shimmy away at it. But yeah, that's it. The secret is top coat. <laughs> See... That's why bacon, you just gotta embrace the glitter. Oh, but Significant Figures actually does know a lot about nail um, polish. Because, like, I don't do gels, and I haven't done press-ons or anything like that. Um, what I tend to do is put on a movie, uh, start, like, draining a box of wine, base coat, Gundam decals, top coat, and by the time I go to bed, they're dry and I'm drunk. That's that's how I roll. Oh, I just I like that we're getting to a stage where like it doesn't matter who you be, like painted nails is just fine. You can just do fancy shit. Oh, Wraith, there's a good point. I always forget uh, to plug the Discord. Um, you're all welcome there. Uh, I keep meaning to do a video tour of like what all the different channels and stuff mean. Okay, we've got the toesies. Let's let's get these fucking shoes finished. And then, oi! Let's get these fucking shoes finished. I did that thing where I've got two different of the same sprue sheet, but I pulled different things from each one because I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> It's like, I've watched those Gundam building videos online where these people have these beautiful, like, immaculate studios. Uh, there's one guy who did, like, a custom uh, GM sniper build that won, like, a whole bunch of awards and stuff. And it's like, the dude even, like, sharpens his pencil in the cleanest manner. He brews coffee, just, like, beautifully efficiently. And then I'm over here, like, this fucking moss-covered gremlin being like, nya, 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 nya. Take this bit off! Stop that on there! <laughs> I am the fucking orcs of the Gundam world, you know what I'm saying?
Oh yeah. And Wraith, that's a good one. Uh, I can't say that all uh, nail salons are worth going to. So, uh, if you're ever looking to get your nails done proper, um, only go to a place that comes recommended by friends. Because, like, a good place, yeah, you end up spending a couple of bob, but it's worth it. And a lot of places will give you, like, booze or, like, a little hand massage or something. It's great. But when it's bad, it sucks. And they usually tend to use more, like, stronger paint and uh, top coat. Which means it's fucking harder to get rid of if you hate it. So. Uh, but they also, they have these little, like, um, black light uh, curing boxes. So you get your nails, like cleaned, uh, your nails kind of like done and set with record timing. It's great. Oh, significance is they haven't had theirs done by other people because their hands could easily damage. They do everything themselves. Fuck yeah. Because the thing is, like, if you work from home, we don't go out a bunch, who's going to see your nails? You are. And, you know, the first step to not sucking at something is to absolutely be fucking terrible at it. That stage is mandatory. I think that's one of the reasons why I fucking love doing these uh, Gundam builds. Is because, like... You can put a build together, and it can be kind of mediocre. But it's alright. And then you can revisit it later and just improve on it. Um, the fancy Gundam I did with the, uh, the spray paint... Um, fuck, what was it? The lace. Um, that one was one of my. That was my very first Gundam I got from Jaraland. And so when I put it together, I didn't do any. I used the stickers. I didn't put any ink on it. I didn't do anything with it. Um, and it needed a lot of love and a lot of care. So coming back to it, giving like a fancy paint job and really giving it like the the attention of my skills now. It feels good. Although, I will say, uh, the thing to buy, separator. Um, I didn't get one of these when I started out, and I wish someone had recommended it. Uh, so this one is a sharpened one, but you basically have this little blade here, and it's a multi-purpose tool for pulling apart Gundam pieces after they've been clipped together, in case you fuck up. This I wish I'd had to start with. But, yeah. So I deconstructed that Barbatus, like, laid all the pieces out, like, painted them, primed and painted them, and it felt great. Um, I also went through it while listening to Jump Leads. That's right, Jump Leads, the premier comedy podcast by Ben. Fucking listen to it, because it's good. And not just because I have a cameo in the show. <laughs> but if that's one of the reasons you want to watch, uh, watch it, listen to it. I mean, I won't, I won't stop you. Uh, Ragnar says, I'm done! Six hours and perfect great legs are done! Weathering next time. You've done it. I'm kind of afraid of the perfect grades, if I'm being perfectly honest. Pun not intended. Pun absolutely unintended. Ragnar says the Gundam 3.0 is a way worse build. Huh, okay. Because I cleared that one and that was a gajillion tiny pieces. Gorgeous kit. Like, I'm so fucking happy with it, but building it, I did think that I was going to end up doing a crime by the end of it. Uh, Ray says, when does Ben find out about his secret thing real fingers crossed what? I don't know. But... I'm I'm fucking rooting for for them. Beans. All right, that's hideable, but like 
I may have to bring our adventures to a close in a little bit because uh, I'm making I'm making stupid mistakes because my hands get tired. So I'm gonna finish this feedy. Oi! Uh, I'm gonna finish this feedy, and then uh, I think I'll I'll find some lovely people for us to to raid on into. Long and black and slender. Heavy duty black bin bags. They're on offer till December. Come and get your black bin bags. Uh, sorry. Again, if Hindle was here, this would be incredibly funny, and they'd be like, Hindle would be like, wow, your impression of that one skit from Phoenix Knights sure is fucking good, Will. And I'd be like, ah, it's a gift, Hindle. It's a gift. I try and use it sparingly. It's like quoting Alan Partridge to people that haven't seen it. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Ray's like, it's okay, Will. I found it funny. Imagine in exactly that voice, like, um, consoling a child. It's okay. Your art can go on the fridge. It's all right. Your Phoenix Knight impression was funny. Occasionally I do the uh, garlic bread. It's the future. I've tasted it. I want to look like a tiger. Clap, clap. Oh, Bright Karma, Let, let's get spooky. Spooky season is here. And if anyone says otherwise, uh, they can just be wrong loudly. Uh, Karma was saying they went to the uh, arts and crafts store and they've already got spooky stuff in. Fuck yeah, it sells. I genuinely think that the, uh, the 12 foot skeleton has had a huge impact on like the on like how stores are being stocking things, especially come Halloween. I don't have any proof of this, because it's a bit out of my wheel well, but I genuinely believe that that gigantic skeleton changed the game. Yeah. Once I finish this book, I will have to bring our adventures to a close, dear friend. That little squeak was a squeak of my hands complaining. I don't know, what's the what's the equivalent of uh, these dogs be barking, but it's your fingers? These hot dogs be wiggling? I don't know. These knuckles be cracking. Uh, Roy Karma, I'm good, I'm good. I just need to finish up this little piece. Uh, and then we're good. Then that's the feedies done. Uh, let's be honest, like, the arms are gonna be a behemoth on themselves. So, okay, as we are slowly bringing our adventures to a close, um, I would like to propose that the Mech Gala theme just be Robots of the Red Carpet. I know it's a bit bland, and I know it's kind of like double stating the same thing, but I think that's, I think that's the path we should take. I don't want to do anything overtly war-themed. Because, I don't know, I just, I got this sinking pit in my stomach. Like, I don't think any of you would be awful. It's just, I don't know. As I said, there's some alarm bell that's going off in my head. And I, uh, I try and listen to that little inner voice where I can. Surprisingly, outside of drinking, uh, it's very good. 
Like my little my little internal monologue has stopped me from getting in trouble many times. Oh, <sighs> piss in every bin. I just missed one bit. Yeah, I'm definitely getting tired. I missed the uh, the heel. Mech Gala at the Red Comet. I do like the idea that that would be the venue name. Chant Asnabul approved. Yeah, it's open to interpretation. It doesn't demand anything huge. And, like, when you consider how many red carpet disasters or victories there have been over the years, like... God, if I had the... Oh, I've got an idea now. Oh, that's really tempting. Uh, basically, a thousand years ago, uh, South Park the movie uh, was up for an Oscar. Uh, they ended up losing to um, uh, Phil Collins. And... Um, when appearing uh, for the uh, the red carpet, Trey Parker and Matt Stone um, had acquired two dresses that had been worn by two famous individuals last year. And during all the interviews on the red carpet leading into the Oscars, they refused to talk about the dresses or even acknowledge that they were wearing them. And anytime anyone asked, they just kept saying, "Boy, it's just it's a magical night. It's great to just be a part of this." Um, they also dropped acid in the limousine, so they had a hilarious and terrible time. Um, and I'm not giving South Park props overall, it's just... I If I could somehow do that, but with giant robots. There's an idea there, there's an idea there. So, friends, miscreants, legends... This is our this is our work so far. Pull this up a little bit. Our little buddy doesn't have a crotch, but does have two chunking great big legs for kicking. Um, this little guy is only going to get beefier as this continues. It does look snazzy. Got a nice sense of accomplishment. Size 140 feet. You better believe it. But with wiggling toes for all you weirdos. <laughs> oh, I always forget about that. Sorry, uh, that was the same Oscars night where Robin Williams performed Blame Canada. Oh. But yeah, we've hit the six hour mark. My hands are getting up there. So the Gundam hasn't missed leg day. Oh no, Bacon, this Gundam has skipped so many leg days, it's not even funny. We're just a very long way away from it. Alright, so time to do the... A uh, little thing I do when I'm working on Gundams is I tick off where I am and I date it. So that way I know how long it's been since I last did it. So we finished the feedies, and it is the... Second... 23. So next up, when we begin, we begin the arms proper. And like, that's just the shoulders. That's just the shoulders. <sighs> but, this has been an excellent, excellent day. The conversation has been wonderful. The company has been above reproach. And, I've got the other half of my sandwich later. So, friends, Longshipians, miscreants. Um, uh, let me just quickly see who's about, because um, Jay brought in a big old raid of 30 peeps, and I'd love to do the same for somebody else. <sighs> Too many cool people, as always. Alright, I'm just going to... Actually, you know what? They're not playing anything that I don't want to that I don't want spoil. We've got to I think we've got to go hang out with DJ after this, you know. Uh DJ's doing um uh Ocarina of Time uh full rando. So that'll be heckin' cool. Hang on, let's see what happens when I turn this off. 
Ooh, it looks kind of spooky. Changes of the colors. So. Yeah. We talked whimsical. We talked heavy conversations. Uh, you all were fucking lovely. And I'm extremely grateful for that. So all of you fucking... Sorry, I guess my big words completely dropped out of my head. So, one, thank you all for the anime recommendations. I'm going to be bulking out my uh, my Crunchyroll watch list. Um, like, thank you for letting me talk about some some difficult times of years past. Some days it's hard to talk about. Other days, I don't mind. This was one of the good ones. So thank you. Um, uh, for those of you that have been building and painting and crafting, um, if it's giant robots or miniatures, put it in No Grey November. Um, for the rest of you, throw it in Creation Celebration because I would love to see your whips. All right. If we're playing Whip Wednesday on a Saturday. <laughs> All right. Um... Yeah, I think that's really about it. Oh, hey, Wraith, you're entirely welcome, friend. Um, I mean, I'm going to pass you over to DJ, and Dan typically goes pretty late, so you'll have company throughout. But um, if, uh, if the mood strikes, I'll be in Discord later. Well, I should say the mood, if I'm able to. Uh, I'll be in Discord later just having a natter, so keep an eye out, friend. Um, yeah. All that's left is to roll credits and go <laughs> go be terrors on somebody else's day. Now, if I set this up correctly, yeah, I did. Credits over robots. Check me out. Fucking you. Um. Okay. So to those of you that celebrated heckin' long sub sprees, I'd like to say a massive thank you. Was it just Martin? Ah, oh, well, good on you, Martin. Um, four years, no less. To Jam, Eremon, Bacon Avenger, Some Numbers, Andorf, Akira Zero, Fearless Sun, J-Post, and Wolfbrad, you know by now that the bits that you throw in and the donations you make is why this keeps happening. So thank you, or heck you, I don't know which. Uh, thank you to the amazing moderation team of Lizzie, Moose, and Carl. A uh, Tal. Lizzie, Moose, Caffeine, Tal. Um, wow, I'm tripping over my words. Something fierce. <laughs> All of you, thank you so much. While you put up with me, I will never know. But couldn't do without you, friends. And uh, I promise I will try and book us a fucking mod meeting. Life, life keeps coming at me too fast. I'm just my guy. And last, by no means least, the legendary Jetman J for bringing in a huge raid, and so many of you stuck stuck around and hung out. So, hopefully, I was a good post pub hangout. Oh, but in true Longshipian fashion, you do not have to go home to go and stay here. So I'm going to pass you over to here with the people, Dan Jones. Um, and yeah, uh, if I don't see you till Tuesday. Just have the fucking best weekend you can, friends. Alright? Um, if you see a stream popping up that says bathtub stream, then... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right! Love to you all. Have, again, a fucking great weekend. And I'll see you later. Good night, friendos. Yeah. What's up, baby boy? Amos judging me from the side. Let's ride!